for Montgomery's conversational radio show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by it. So you know the you know the thing. You know, they used to say Abraham Lincoln got the worst press. I said there's no way he got worse than me. This is how you conduct yourself in a democracy. <laughs> Fat broads and shut up, silly woman. Joey Clark. I'll stop messing with my buttons here because it's just way too much fun. And we got a packed show. At two, we're going to have on uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, two time Bronze Star winner. Started up a podcast talking about foreign policy. And uh, well, at one o'clock, we either have the mayor of Montgomery, Stephen Reed, calling in or stopping by. I'm not certain. Okay. Uh, but. Without further ado, to kick off the show today, we have former State Senator Dick Brubaker. Of course, he is now a candidate to be your next congressman in District 2. How are you doing today, Dick? Well, I'm doing great. Thanks for letting me be on your show. Yeah, good to have you here. So this is the first question I ask everybody, whether they're running for mayor, city council, or if I get a chance to talk to a presidential candidate, I'll ask this. Why do this to yourself? You know, that's a good question. And when I got out of politics, you know, I, I said I'd serve two terms and then I quit. And I served two terms, and I uh, was surprised at how much I would have liked to have run for a third. Being a state senator is, uh, is a good political office to have. But uh, anyway, I got out, and uh, I'm telling you, having grandkids will change your perspectives on things. I mean, mm-hmm. I spent 20 years in state politics, thought I'd done my bit, but uh, things are going wrong, both nationally. I mean, this current administration is... A disaster and frankly in our own party I mean we have got to get serious about governing and get serious about winning elections Uh, and frankly I I think I can help push the ball in the right direction and uh, given the field of candidates which is a good field uh, I still think the second district would be better served with me in the office than anybody else who's running because 21 people qualify before the deadline that's a lot of people Yes, it's it is. 13 Democrats, 8 Republicans. Uh, it won't be boring. There'll be a lot of money spent, uh, especially on the Democrat side. And in the general election, uh, that's where why do this to yourself comes in. You know, I have warned my wife and my sons and uh, that get ready. They're going to try yeah. to convince everybody in the district, too, that your old man's, a, you know, a racist and every other bad thing there is. Right. Uh, but... Uh, we need to turn things around and i'm not sure how much more time we have well and it's one thing to talk about republicans winning and that certainly is a debate going on nationally right now but if you had to lay out how can the country win like what are the main things you see that we just got to turn the ship around here well you know if i had a political philosophy it's it's very brief liberty and limited government the most of the problems that are happening right now that hurt families are the direct result of bad decisions by the people in power completely crazy levels of spending and i hate to say it but it all started with covid and the covid money and then uh as uh as bad as that was you know when the biden administration got in they didn't double down on it they tripled down on it and just a phenomenal amount of money federal tax dollars being spent mainly to convince people not to be productive to stay home and not work and hence the inflation and the other thing driving inflation and particularly in the food sector is is energy costs and this increase in energy prices is not the result of opec you know trying to gain leverage on the west it's a result of our own government interfering with domestic energy production the day biden took office we were actually a net exporter of energy not anymore Hmm. so drill more and let's get our house back in order financially i'm sure you saw that 
it was a, it's a headline I've been worried about for a while. What the interest on the national debt just passed over a trillion dollars. It's one of, if not the biggest line item in the federal budget. Well, and you you can't just keep you know doing the wrong thing more intensely is never going to result in a good thing and that seems to be the biden administration's approach to this and sadly a lot of republicans have gone along with it um and i understand that when uh the COVID outbreak began you know everybody was kind of in a panic you know we did this hurry up vaccine that didn't work out as as people had hoped but then we did something that the government has never done before we just began handing out money and you know i'm surprised it took as long as it did to get inflation really going i know the mainstream media is trying to tell people the inflation rate uh is only nine percent but if you look at staples i mean you know butter sugar the stuff people raising families actually buy and this is from the bureau of labor statistics Butter is up 32 percent, sugar 31 percent, potatoes 13, milk 15, hamburger, you know, just ground beef 15 percent, uh, bacon, which is very important to me, yeah, oh yeah, uh, 18 percent. Mm. And between April of 2022 and January of 2023, eggs were up 120 oh, yeah. percent. Now I raised five boys. That's a lot of eggs. Yeah. And for working families in the second district or heck anywhere else, when you talk about the basic foodstuffs you need to feed your family, having a, a combined inflation rate of well over 20 percent, uh, you know, that's serious. That hurts people. And, and if we did two things, we could begin to turn it around, have some sanity on government spend on federal spending and quit shooting ourselves in the foot on energy production. And I'm not a scientist. I don't know a whole lot about uh, global warming, just what I read in the paper. But I know this, that our biggest competitors, China burned more coal in 2022 than at any time in their history. Same goes for India. And if this was as serious as we're being told it is, you would think our our federal government would be taking steps internationally to curtail that, but they're not. And, you know, they, they say that the sea levels are going to rise and in 12 years, you know, the coast will be submerged. And all the time, these political elites are buying their beach houses. They don't believe it either. Right, man. Again, folks, we're talking to Dick Brubaker. He is now a candidate for Congress, the first of the many interviews I think I'm going to be doing this cycle with all these candidates. Yeah, you can see you've got a lot of candidates to interview. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we had a lot of folks uh, to get to. But you know, sticking on COVID, because so much of, this, of everything seems to come out of COVID, whether it is, yes, the inflation. or And another thing that came out of it is this control, say, a censorship, the government working together with big tech and other folks to the quiet people about well, even malinformation, true information oh, yeah. that's inconvenient. But before I forget, do you have much of an opinion on the origins of how this whole thing started with COVID? Because I think holding China accountable or at least getting a straight answer, getting to the bottom of how this started is very important. It is. And I don't know that one thing about this administration, uh, you're never going to get a straight answer about anything, not about what happened to Jeffrey Epstein or where COVID came from. Um But I will say that COVID was used as an excuse to throw the very idea of limited government just right out the window. And if you look, you know, I will say this, whatever you think about Kay Ivey, you know, Kay Ivey did resist the temptation to abuse her office and start uh, exercising control over the economy that I don't think the Constitution allows. Uh, but a lot of governors not only uh, abuse their authority, they're still abusing it. I mean, if, you know, they have rolled back some of the controls, but they've established legal precedents to where they can reestablish those controls by the governor just saying so. And, you know, this is the sort of thing that turns democracies into something else really quickly when you have the government willing to invade people's personal lives to this extent you know essentially 
put them under house arrest. You have to stay on your, you can't go outside. You have to stay home. If you do go, go outside, you have to wear a mask. I mean, shutting down schools, it's absurd. It, it really is. And then, I'm, again, with the information control, and this is a big part of uh, the House uh, Committee on the Weaponization of Government, uh, I mean, how do you, what's your opinion on this? Like, because to me, here's just my take is that this is the government through the back door violating the First Amendment. It seems oh, absolutely it is. Well, I, I, you know, this redistricting that we just went through uh, in Alabama, you know, what the Democrats are doing, you know, I will say this for Joe Biden. He is good at taking the, 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 the sinews of government <laughs> and making them work for him, mm. uh, whether it's the FBI or the way the Justice Department is being used, or even redistricting. You know, it's not just Alabama. There's several other states with similar lawsuits. And what the Democrats are trying to do is without any elections, without they're trying to use the courts to flip Congress. I mean, we've been being told the whole time I was in the legislature, the mantra from the U.S. Supreme Court when it came to redistricting was, you can't base it on race. Well, now you've got... Uh, the special master, Mr. Allen, who, who drew these maps. I mean, I will say this, he was completely honest. He based it on race and nothing else. Right. And so if it's, uh, if it's something that the Biden administration wants, such as flipping Congress without anybody casting a single vote, well then if you can use race. But if it's a, a state legislature in Arkansas or Alabama or Alaska trying to come up with some sort of fair, rational re redistricting? Oh, no. Uh, if you use race as a factor, uh, you know, that redistricting plan is out, and we'll just draw one for you. And for I mean, it's crazy. And for folks who don't know the, the new district, of course, it contains all of Montgomery County and uh, a lot of counties to the west of there, but the, a lot of the population in this, in this new district is going to be there in Mobile County. So you're very well known in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there, I'd imagine there's a good bit of legwork to get your name out there more in the southern part well, of the state. Well, the district runs from the eastern boundary of Alabama all the way to the western boundary. And instead of running down interstate corridors where you have economic communities of interest, they went across interstate <laughs> corridors. <laughs> so you've got um, Barber County and Washington County on opposite ends of the state in the same congressional district. It is, uh, you know, other than to elect a Democrat, which is their stated goal, I'm not saying this for them, uh, this is what they said about themselves, uh, there's no rationality to the way this district was drawn. Right. And it is, uh, and, and frankly, after this first election cycle, I think the courts are going to get another look at this district. I don't believe that uh that these districts are going to stand at least i hope they don't well and i remember uh, i think it was when i was in college when the pre-clearance section of the voting rights act was removed the democrats were screaming bloody murder but i think were. this map uh wouldn't have been pre-cleared by the justice department like i think you would have had the same setup we've had it that map had been pre-cleared many years before so uh, the ironies of these changes here well it would have been i think this uh Justice Department would have pre-cleared it uh, right, because right, right. it is a it is a they, the Justice Department instead of enforcing the law and stopping drug dealers and human traffickers, um, I mean look at the way they're handling the border. Uh, they are you know actually interfering with the function of law, and right. I don't think that uh, it's hard to convince people that they are pursuing the agenda of the Biden administration, not a policy agenda, but a political agenda. I mean, and these districts are just one more example. Again, folks are talking to former state Senator Dick Brubaker. And uh, given that, how many terms were you a state senator? Well, I served one term in the state house. State house. And yeah. when uh, term limits are something Republicans always have talked about. So when I ran for the state Senate, I said I would serve two terms if I was fortunate enough to get reelected. And so I served my two terms, and then I did not defend my seat. I dropped out. Now, do, do you think your experience there within the Alabama legislature gives you a leg up on, say, others who haven't experienced what it's like to work in a legislature uh, going oh, up there? Oh, yeah, I think it does. And I think the, uh, the main thing is that for someone who's, who's been in a legislative body, 
the question you need to ask yourself are, are they representing the interests of the people who put them in office? And are they good at, at pushing back when government oversteps its bounds? And I think my record's pretty good on that. I'll give you an example if you want sure. one. Yeah. Tommy Bice, when he was state superintendent, uh, just announced one day that he was going to govern non-public schools, that he was he called all the heads of schools uh, into a meeting, and he was just going to lay down the law and says, from now on, essentially, you're working for me. You're going to do what I tell you to do. And Stephanie Bell uh, blew the whistle on it because he was all done on the QT. I mean, it was uh. done with very little notice, uh, and she got Governor Ivey involved. Uh, and Governor Ivey forced Bice to delay. Well, in the meantime, I wrote a bill that did uh, essentially two things. Number one, it gave homeschoolers status in law. It recognized that their rights, the right of parents to homeschool their kids, which uh, homeschooling before that had always been done on sufferance, you know, but they had no clear legal standing. Uh, it did that, and the other thing it did was it put into law that the State Department of Education had absolutely no authority to govern non-public schools, and there are only two things they could require. One was background checks of teachers, and the other was that uh, the true that attendance reporting be done because of state truancy laws. And but beyond that, non-public education is being run by the people paying for it which are, you know, whether it's a parochial school or an independent private school or a home school, they are not under the governance of the State Department of Education. Do you, at this point, I would certainly have any idea what committees you might want to try to vie for and get on up there in Washington? Well, given the district, Ag and Armed Services. There you go. I mean, I think that's, uh, I think if you ask any of the 20-odd uh, people running for this office, if they don't give those two as their uh First choice is, uh, I think they're making a mistake because this district, as far as the federal government goes, agriculture and armed services. Now, and as a quick follow-up on that, how important is it? And this could be if it's you or it could be a, a Democrat who's from the Montgomery area. How important would it be to have a United States senator who's probably going to be there a long time along with a representative from this area too? Oh, it's uh, for the Wiregrass and for Montgomery, it would be great. Uh, we have... When Senator Shelby and uh, left office, you know Montgomery and the well, have, have, the whole state of Alabama All right. lost a, a great champion as far as someone who looked after the home folks. Um, but Katie Britt obviously has has assumed that seat is doing a great job. I mean, for a first term senator. Uh, to have the sort of uh, influence that she's had and, uh, and, and frankly, uh, kind of pull in the Republican Party she's managed to, to put together. It's amazing for someone. How long has she been in office? What, a year and a half? Right. I mean, it, it's astounding. And, and Coach Tuberville's done, a great, done very well as well. But on the House side, uh, the, you know, we have Robert Adderholt, who is the chairman of agriculture, which is great for Alabama, but we need – to elect, first of all, we need to elect someone who actually lives in the district. The majority of those 20 odd people running don't live in the district. Mm. Um, and I think that it's important for whoever holds the office to actually have real family and business and emotional connections to the people he represents. Uh, but, and, and frankly, I think I'm that person. I mean, there's some other people in the race who can make the same claim, but. Uh, the person who could uh, who has the same legislative experience I do also didn't live in the district. Well, and you know that just made me think it's it's to uh, Congressman Barry Moore's credit that he's not trying to stay in two. He's going to where he's now drawn in, where he actually lives. Going up against Jerry Carr. Uh, that race won't be boring either. <laughs> <laughs> no, not not at all. But uh, here two seven two nine two two eight. If you have a comment or question for Dick Rubaker, let's go to Red Top. Hey, Red Top, how you doing? Dick, it is sure good to hear your voice on the radio again. God, it's been years. Well, it has been a while since I've been on the radio. Uh, and uh, how's your family and your children? My uh, five boys are doing well, uh, very well. My grandkids are uh, keeping my life interesting. 
and uh, God has been good to us. Everybody is holding it in the road. You know, with a crowd like that, you ought to be Catholic. <laughs> well, no, I tell no, you, if you, if no one can tell you that. <laughs> having a bunch and, of kids is the best decision we ever made. Well, I wish I had I more. And uh, you know, with good parents, that's why you're a gem to the society in this world. And uh, now that you sold the Buick dealership, I can tell you comfortably that uh, whenever these young guys start to act too old, I tell them, you know, it's time you guys went and bought a Buick. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. You know, I I tried to retire, you know, when we uh, sold the dealership, but it was horrible. <laughs> what? Well, I, <laughs> you don't like retirement? I was bored out of my mind. I mean, I got yeah. to, you know, I just need something. You need something worthwhile. Yeah. Work hard at work worth doing. Well, you know, Dick, I'm going to be 70 in 32 days, and I've never worked harder in my life, and I'm better at what I've ever done. Well, there you go. So, uh, I, I, retirement, uh, when somebody asks me if I'm going to retire, I say, I don't need no time. Well, it, uh, is, it didn't suit me. Now, my question for you is, we, things are all out of whack in this country. Fentanyl, which has now been declared the worst drug in history, killing more people than ever, is not on Schedule 1. Mm. I, I didn't know that. Is it Schedule no. 2? Yes, sir, but yeah. marijuana is on Schedule 1. It right. has just been made legal in 20, the 24th state. Uh, and, you know, things. Uh, the prohibition on marijuana has been going on 55 years. It has stopped a tremendous amount of research for people like me who have epilepsy who use it to stop seizures. And I would like to know if somebody like yourself could get in Congress and try to re-level this and recalibrate this war on drugs, which still uh, holds marijuana on number one and uh, as dangerous as fentanyl and heroin. we got to change this um, to help for medical stuff. So um, I would like to know if somebody can help stop this war on drugs. And, you know, the Chinese uh, run the Panama Canal. And now they run all the ships into Panama full of thin mill, and it goes straight up to America. Boy, well, do we have a bizarre situation. And it I'll is bizarre. Talk, I mean, who thank knows? You. Yeah, thanks talk. for calling. I mean, the uh, the amount of drugs and, and just, you know, the human trafficking, the, the the human lives that are being destroyed by our open bo- po- open border policy, uh, even whether the media cover, covers it or not, it's still happening. I mean, children are being trafficked. Drugs are being trafficked. And the Biden administration can't seem to decide whether or not it's a problem. It's unbelievable. And, you know, as far as the medical marijuana goes, the feds have allowed states, you know, to, uh, you know, to make medical marijuana available. But the, um, the, the problems that people who want to use medical marijuana are, have encountered is the fact that the state process is usually so cumbersome that it's very difficult right. to actually obtain it. I mean, look at the, you know, they haven't even given out licenses yet in Alabama. Right. So, which is an example of how these state laws are. It, it's uh, funny, my, op- very well written. my op-ed that's been accepted, it's coming out tomorrow for 1819 News, is essentially I say uh, the fact that Alabamians can't buy pot is a joke. And, and the law, I'm, my point is not like, oh, I didn't like the law. I don't like the prohibition. It's also that I think the law itself has kind of become a bit of a joke. It's still against the law, but the sentencing has been put down a lot. You can talk to law enforcement. How much are they actually enforcing this law? There are some arrests, and I believe there's a rumor going around that they're looking, at at least at the administrative level, to change Schedule 1 marijuana to a Schedule 3 drug. So it could happen. You know, we'll see what they do. I mean, I don't – I'm not in – I'm not a legalized dope guy, but I will say that – the problem with the Alabama law is that by limiting the number of licensees so severely, uh, what you've got is a monopoly product, yep. right. which means it's going to be overpriced. Yep. And by the time they uh, standardize it, it will be unavailable. And so uh, at the end of the day, the legal standardized medical marijuana, if it's four times the street price, Right. You have accomplished absolutely nothing right. that the bill set out to accomplish. And that's because they wanted to make these cannabis licenses sort of the new gambling permits. Right, 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 right. And, 
you know, that's what's wrong with the law. And as they're finding out, like I say, here we are uh, in November of uh, 23, and they haven't issued a single license. Yeah, I don't blame John McMillan by any means. I more look at how that law was constructed. And, you know, maybe we should have done something maybe, like Oklahoma did, not as full bore as Oklahoma, but at least they're having a free market there in that industry. Well, and if the idea is to make uh, – the drug available medically for people with legitimate medical issues that can be helped. Uh, I don't think we had to have this grotesquely over-engineered uh, legal process. I mean, there's standardized medical grade marijuana already being grown in the United States. I mean, they could have distributed it through county health departments to people that had, you know, you handle it like any other drug, get a prescription and if the doctor goes along with it. Go get it at a county health department since pharmacies don't want to handle it. Well, but instead of doing that, it's got to be grown in Alabama. It's got to be on what one of nine, you know, licenses. I mean, it's just right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be expensive and slow to arrive. Well, and we're pretty much out of time here. Uh, this thirty minutes went fast, very fast indeed. Um, but uh, before I let you go, if folks want to support the campaign. Uh, and we're just getting started here. But BrewBakerForCongress.com. BrewBakerForCongress.com. That's right. That's it. Okay. Go and I am promised by my campaign manager that the link to the WinRed, if you want to donate, it will be there. And uh, whoever you, listen, y'all, whoever you vote for, turn out and vote. And uh, liberty and limited government. That's what we need. Love that. Well, I'll, I'll just say I'm trying to, because I got a lot of interviews, trying to be impartial, but uh, it's great to see a familiar face in here and already showing off, I think, that legislative mind for some of those answers there. So, All right. Well, I thank you for letting you, me come. Yes, sir. Thanks for dropping by. More news and views in the afternoon after this. carry news talk in your pocket download the news talk 93.1 app from the app store available on iphone and android never miss a moment download now is your cell phone or ipad cracked broken or not working right don't let the big carrier stores sucker you into a new $1,100 device. Let XI Repair fix your device today. XI Repair fixes cell phones, computers, laptops, iPads, game consoles, drones, and more. Their certified technicians fix hundreds of devices every day. When your device needs care, call XI Repair, 334-777-1234, or Google XI Repair. Hi, this is Bo Goodson from the Goodson Group with your fall market report on real estate in the River Region. From January through September of 2023, close to 3,600 homes have sold and closed in our area through area realtors. Our average sales price is approximately $250,000, which makes us one of the most affordable areas in the state to buy a house. So far this year, sellers that listed with an area realtor were blessed with a sales price that was 98% of the listed price or possibly above listed price. Because we have had a severe shortage of houses on the market, the buyers have had to look a little longer to find a home that satisfied their needs. Even with higher rates, local mortgage lenders have found ways for buyers to buy down rates on their mortgages and making the transition from tenants to home ownership possible. For all the details, call Bo Goodson from the Goodson Group at 221-2883 or 551-0225. Hi there, I'm Madeline Cannon with Alabama Home Mortgage. Getting pre-approved is the first step towards home ownership. People are often scared or nervous about taking that first step, but I'll tell you, it's nothing to be scared of. At Alabama Home Mortgage, we will take the first step and every step along the way with you. Call us at 567-4223. We will gather the information needed to tell you exactly what you qualify for. After a call to Alabama Home Mortgage, you will know what price point to shop for, what down payment is required, if any, and what your monthly mortgage payment will look like. We take all the guessing out of it. 
Then, when you find the house you want to make your home, you are ready to make an offer. Along with your offer, you will submit your Alabama Home Mortgage Pre-Approval Letter. This shows sellers that you've already taken the steps necessary to ensure that you qualify to purchase their home. Wait no longer. It's time to take that first step together. Call me at 567-4223 or start the process online at MyAlabamaHomeMortgage.com. That's Alabama Home Mortgage because, folks, there is a difference in mortgage companies. NMLS 1586 8 Equal Housing Lender. Don't you love the feeling of coming home to a clean house? Let Southern Bells Cleaning Service get your home in order. Families in the River Region trust Southern Bells because they know Callan and Jesse will show up on time and believe in cleaning the old-fashioned way. They bring all their own supplies and specialize in full-service, residential, commercial, vacant properties, and construction cleanup. Estimates are always free. Call Southern Bells today at 546-0715 or follow them on Facebook at Southern Bells Cleaning River Region. For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company, run by Alabamians for Alabamians. 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. The premier place the River Region turns to for news, weather, traffic, and opinion. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon. I'm your host, Joey Clark. Of course, Eddie Bader's in the house. How y'all doing today? Doing all right. How you doing? All right, I got to find the hair. Find some camera action. You actually have to bend the arm. There you go. You're hey. looking, though. Yeah, check out the live stream, folks, especially when we got these great guests in the studio. That's Joey Clark live on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Like Joey and subscribe. Clark live. We might as well just change the name of the show to that. I'm right. I'm waiting for you. Yeah, well, we'll see how that works out. Got to convince some folks. But, uh, yeah, as we have all these interviews coming up with these congressional races, it's going to be fun having this live stream here, 272-9228, if you want to get in on the conversation. But first, this part of the program brought to you by Montgomery Men's Health. And they're at Montgomery Men's Health. Well, they can help you men out because they're reinventing men's health care here in the River Region. Mm-hmm. Now, they can help you with performance issues like PE or ED or right. you know what I'm talking about having to do with the bedroom but what if you're always feeling tired mm. just lacking energy motivation oh, yeah. and drive and it's not just physical tiredness it's like you're mentally Mental. not as sharp just kind of listless a fog there mm-hmm. every day maybe you're haunted by past memories of your younger self where you could go all day all night without petering out well it could be that you got low T could be low testosterone So for only $99, you can know your testosterone numbers. It's just a quick blood draw there at Montgomery Men's Health. And, of course, if you do have low T, they have treatments there that can truly change your life. They've successfully treated thousands of men for low T. So it could be more of an oral treatment. Mm -hmm. It could be a shot you take. There's all sorts of different types of treatment. But here's the deal. After these treatments, most men experience higher energy, better gains in the gym. Brother, brother. That's right, brother. Better mental clarity, improved sleep patterns, and you might even notice an increased libido. It's worth it, Joey. It is definitely worth it. So check them out today. That's 440-3663. 440-3663. Or go to MontgomeryMensHealth.com. And be sure to tell them you heard about them here on News and Views in the Afternoon with Joey and Eddie. For the break, let's go to Randall. Hey, Randall. What's up, Randall? What's going on, fellas? How you doing, bud? Oh, man, pretty good. But this kind of, the, I mean, to drop this cannabis stuff down, you know, back in the 1800s, there were they were 27 over-the-counter uh, uh, THC products, from creams to, I mean, everything. And then... Uh, Along come Rockefeller mm-hmm. with his petroleum, and find out that he could get that that place in uh, Russia and start making the uh, making the the, the pills stuff. All that it really started, I guess, before it's called Bayer Aspirin. It, it kind of started before then, but uh, you, you can't. The government, our military, put out lies, put out false studies to take this, take all off the shelf, 
scare everybody to death, get rid of him because you know how him, you know the whole nine yards they wanted it all off the table so stuff didn't last long. Like the rope, shirt, clothes, and it's like the Constitution. I mean, it's only I mean everybody knows on him paper. It's just they had to get rid of it, so we've been lied to. So for them to even downscale it, it would, would, would they had to admit that they lied to us. I just don't see that happening. And then you take uh, the man who gave us all the information we ever needed about marijuana just died this past March from Israel. And his name is, uh, is Ralph, Raphael Macahome mm-hmm. or something I can't pronounce exactly right. But he just died. He just passed away. And in the 70s, we sent some of our money over there, our, our, our tax money. To, to do studies, and it didn't come back like we wanted it, so we quit. Pay, we quit getting studied with him. And John Rockefeller mo- wrote his own. You had to go by these guidelines about marijuana to get paid to get money, and, and then that's where our medicine starts coming in, and it's petroleum based. All I mean, I know it's kind of hard to imagine how how you make medicine you take out of petroleum. You know, it's why, how they got petroleum used in it. I, I really forgot, don't even know the breakdown, but I know it has to do with, with petroleum, and that's mm. why he started, so that's why he had his hands in. And so he he set out the faults, all the lies. But there's one thing about it, man. That you, you say that some people uh, are, are over-swapping this stuff off the table, you know, uh, you get pulled over, he's going to throw the sack out. Don't come to Tall County with that. Well, you're going oh, to yeah. There's still arrests I mean, going on. Uh, I'm Mark, saying the sentencing, yeah. and, like, there's pretrial diversion, there's now drug courts. Um, and then, yeah, it depends on where you are, but uh, there are a lot of law enforcement would rather not even have to deal with it. Uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but, like, Mark, he is added to his team and mm-hmm. got Action Jackson back in there. And I, I'm not mad because, man, like, Chris Smith had got carried away up there. Like, yeah. it, it came from Chip County, and it was kind of taken over. And it needed to be done with, but you can't ask a man, hey, I want you to, I want you to stand on these walls because I smoked this. Let this go by. I mean, you're asking him to be a two-faced person, and we trying to get away from that. So we need people like Dick Brokebacker to, to, to really to get Raphael studies. Look at, man, he took kids man, in preschool and had weed all in them uh, their whole life about it and, and, and documented about it. If, if this group was sick, this group wasn't, this group had, I mean, we're talking about five, six, seven-year-old kids. Right. He put THC in. I mean, he really got, they ain't nothing you cannot find out about marijuana from a uh, from fat man study. Now that he died, I don't know what's going to happen to all of it. But, but I mean, this is kind of show you what they did up here. There's a man up here that, that had no guns in his house, no kind of pain medicine, no kind of stuff. You know, he needs it. All he did was grew his own marijuana and he juiced it himself and made butter and he had a little. Didn't bother nobody. I mean, I ain't seen them, but I don't know him for. I don't know it, so I don't know if he bothered anybody or not. Now. But I read the paper and I saw. Uh, it, they, they didn't confiscate nothing, but they didn't have it wasn't nothing he had, but it was all THC stuff. And even the fans, they confiscated his fans up here in, in Tall County, put it on display. Like they not playing no more. Mark is, and so uh, yeah, that yeah. I just want to make sure everybody like it's just seeing where you are. If you got somebody, yeah, like, but it, it's it's like the war in Afghanistan. They ain't winning yeah. a squat. They're just annoying people at this yeah, point. You know, but I I gotta run, need, Randall. Yes, appreciate it, man. Hey, we see you, Randall. Hey, bro. Right, bro. Two seven two nine two two eight. Uh, this part of the program brought to you by Pest Pro Services, and I got to tell you, folks, Ashley and her team, they do great work, and I love seeing how their team has grown. Mm-hmm. And this is a sign of how popular they yeah. are, how good they are at what they do when it comes to pest control. And it's good to know a few of the folks there oh, at definitely. Pest Pro Services, not just for the pest control services. But there's great folks. They're always giving back to the community. Definitely. I'm not surprised that Ashley has grown that business leaps and bounds in the last few years. They're just that good there. Mm-hmm. So it could be something like, well, treating termites. But you want to treat termites before they actually cause a problem. Yeah, you do. Joe. Because homeowners insurance doesn't cover that sort of thing. So why not have Pest Pro come out? Essentially, they'll lay down some bait. When termites get near your property, they'll hit that bait first. Pest Pro will know and take them out. Of course, if it's been a little too late, you still can have Pest Pro come out and take care of termites if you do find they're already in the house or mm-hmm. hitting the property. But any sort of emergency pest control problem, Pest Pro can help you. But I recommend making them your everyday pest control company. They'll get you on a quarterly schedule, and that team has got you, well, jam up and jelly tight, as the old song says. So call Pest Pro today, 265 9990. That's 265 9990. Nine zero, or you can always go to ppsriverregion.com or just search Pest Pro Services 
on the book of faces. When you want to know, call a pro, Pest Pro Services. Be sure to tell Ashley and her team there that Joey and Eddie from News and Views in the afternoon sent you more news and views. Coming up, I believe we'll have the Mayor Montgomery, Stephen Reed, on the show a little after one o'clock. You'll stay tuned. He may not know whether he's coming or going. But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Actor portrayal, based on a real patient experience. I'm Mike. I'm a husband, proud father of two, work my butt off six days a week, some nights too. When my family or my company needs me to make it happen, I make it happen. But a few months ago, I started having trouble making it happen, you know, in the bedroom. I tried some pills online, but they didn't work. Honestly, I thought about throwing in the towel on my sex life, but I'm not that old. I still want to enjoy intimacy with my wife. Like that poet said, I don't want to just go gently into that good night. So I went to Montgomery Men's Health, got some lab work done, was prescribed some meds, and wow, it made it happen. I can't say enough good about them. They took care of me, followed up, and made adjustments to make it happen even better. I even learned I had low testosterone, which they were also treating me for and I have never felt better. If I were you and you're like me, I'd give them a call today at 334-440-3663 or go to MontgomeryMensHealth.com. If you're like most guys, they'll make it happen for you too. The Tears family has been your local Roto-Rooter service since 1964. Drain cleaning, plumbing repair, and those troublesome septic tanks, no problem. Technology has changed a bit in the last 54 years. Video inspections of lines to locate problems is available, as well as scheduling your appointment online. River Region residents have trusted Roto-Rooter for over half a century. You can too. Call today at 272-7130 or visit online at rotorooteralabama.com. Call Roto-Rooter, that's the name. And we go troubles down the drain. Roto-Rooter. I'm Wiley Dempsey. I own Cartridge World uh, here in Montgomery. I've been here for over 10 years. Uh, we recently moved across town to 6383 Atlanta Highway. Uh, without Blue Water, we wouldn't be able to uh, be as successful as we are. They got the message out to thousands of people. Radio works. It's as simple as that. Call us to find out how radio can work for your business. Blue Water Broadcasting. Local folks helping local business. The Rich Thomas Weather Network, brought to you by Montgomery Paint and Body. From a little fender bender to total body repair, MPB will fix it good as new, maybe better. For over 35 years, the Turner family has been getting you back on the road. Call 279-7325. Rich Thomas Weather. Well, hi, everybody. Dry start to the week today, but that won't last long. Today is high temperature in the upper 60s, partial sunshine, but considerable cloudiness. Then the risk of more rain begins late tonight, low 53. Tomorrow and Wednesday, periods of rain, breezy, cool, high near 60 tomorrow and Wednesday. Looks like a potential soaker. We do need the rain, though. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. ASE Credit Union makes auto loans easy with rates as low as 4.75% APR. Apply online or visit your local branch today. Federally insured by the NCUA Equal Opportunity Lender. ASE Credit Union, your life, your goals, your history. What's your biggest investment? More than likely, it's your home. So treat it that way when you hire a painting contractor. With PBS Painting, there are no gimmicks, no $99 specials. Just quality painting and someone who treats your home with the same respect that you do. At PBS Painting, we have been painting for years and look forward to many more years to come. With PBS Painting, the job gets prepped properly, whether it's cleaning, scraping, or priming. We always use quality products, which is a must for a quality paint job. So if you're looking for a painter that doesn't need upfront money and is on the job at all times, then please give me a call. Scott Bowers and PBS Painting, 294-5122. That's PBS Painting, 294-5122. Look at some of our work on Facebook at PBS Painting Montgomery. Hi, 
I'm Ray Bowles from Proudville Carpet. If you're looking for waterproof carpet, hardwood, laminate, final plank, or ceramic tile, call us today for your free measurement. The fall sale is on, and there's never been a better time to upgrade your floors. During Proudville Carpet's biggest sale of the year, find deep discounts on Mohawk flooring for every room in your home, plus interest-free financing with approved credit. Get new floors before the holidays with huge discounts. Visit PrattvilleCarpet.com or call 285-8117 today. Proudville Carpet, we're more than just carpet. Trustworthy, accurate, immediate. Carrying your voice across the river region. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon. 272-9228. Of course, a lot happening in the world today. Uh, Donald Trump's sister apparently passed away today at 86 years old, I believe. Uh, Sad to see. Um, You're now getting, oh, well, this broke in the presidential race. Tim Scott has dropped out. I saw that last night. Ronna McDaniel, chair of the RNC, uh, fresh off her fight with Vivek Ramaswamy, yeah. she's saying, quote, RNC will support President Trump even if he's convicted. Okay, Ronna. I think there's Good some that arm you, twisting there, Joey. Glad she went on hmm. the record. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> now, the Washington Post has a fascinating story that the Ukraine military, uh, it was a Ukrainian military officer who coordinated the Nord Stream attack. Yeah think this is a cia plant of a story scapegoat. not to get all conspiratorial but a little bit of a, a scapegoat. scapegoat much there buddy uh, after, what, after like that's going six on. or eight months after the world figured out and did you see that they cleaned up the streets of san francisco no i didn't yeah because president xi jinping all of a sudden all these homeless people and encampments uh. disappeared overnight because President Xi is coming to meet President Biden there. Well, I know some towns, like for Super Bowl and stuff like that, come. They seem to arrest everybody. Well, and also, here's the thing. San Francisco erected walls ah. for security reasons with ah. President Xi of China joining in. I wonder whose request that was. And then we'll have an economic update coming up with from Peter St. Ange. But it's not good. Consumer spending fell in October. And he's also looking at, like, inventory, especially trucking. They're seeing less and less demand for their services, and yep. this is a bad sign of a recession, Very a bad one so. ahead. Very much. Um, only 24% of Democrats say they're better off financially under Biden. I'd That's like to, an amazing I'd like number. to meet those 24% of the people. No, and maybe they're really rich. If you have a bunch of money to play with, this economy probably isn't as bad as if you're really sensitive to food, gas, yeah, all these but, sort of things, but, but still right, ain't easy. When the economy is this bad, lots of um, scammers are out there. Right, 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 right. Well, uh, <clears throat> is that a little update there I'm seeing? Yeah, it's a, the cable system has issued a uh, required weekly test of the emergency alert system, I Did guess. Did that start this week? I guess so. But I, I want to do something before we hit the top of the br- hour break and bring on uh, the mayor. Okay. How about a Florida story, Eddie? Ooh, I love Florida. Presented in a video form. Now, you know, everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a cousin in Miami. Everybody gets something. Oh, boy. And um, <clears throat> this woman who has short hair. Okay, um, so we're for sure that's a chick right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll just pull the. She's crying. Yeah. That's how this clip starts. A Florida woman. But she's crying over the fact that pork chop was taken away from her by authorities. Oh. Only in Florida, folks. Let's listen in. I don't know what else to say right now. They took pork chop away from me. It's been heartbreaking for Jacobson. Her pork chop estimated at... Oh, good Lord. Um, that's like a low rider. <laughs> that's a big old pig, man. I mean, his, his belly... He he's he's part of the ground. <laughs> That's a big old pig. No, but see, I can't he even walk. No, was led away not easily by animal care and control. Well, they should have used some donuts during an eviction in Northwood Village. Officers concerned oh, about the animals. Weight we should be laughing. Wow, now it's a pig. It's okay. Custody. And I thought. 
Oh. Not for me. And so the pork chop not. being her pet pig has been a problem for a while. Right. Even though she fought a lot of people, she was the one that was right the whole time, not the rest of the world. It was quite a distraction. I do know that. They heard it across the street, squealing. Surprised is one way to describe reactions in the neighborhood to an animal many are not used to seeing. They're sentient beings. They're just incredible. They're so misunderstood. Annette Robleski runs a pig sanctuary called Laughing Pig, about two and a half hours away in those Central can touch the ground. She yeah. says pigs like pork chop can be helped. It's going to be a long process, so if he can't walk. So that's the story of pork chop, folks. I just wanted to share that real quick because uh, pork chop needs to put the cheeseburgers down. I don't think pork chop has much of a governor when it comes to eating. I think pork chop was eating whatever he was being fed. Now he's been fed well. Yeah. Jeez. <clears throat> so I kind of want to clip that scene of pork chop being moved Put out of the there. house and make it a gif and a clip. It's like the walk of shame the night the morning after. Ooh, Joey. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> they took away my pork chop. Man, she was pretty upset. Poor lady. But you never know what people are going through. It's like, why? Are you okay? It's what's happening. They took away my pig and it was too fat. Right. Or maybe she's in an area where you're not allowed to have pigs. Oh. Uh -huh. If I'm her landlord, no, I don't allow pigs. Sorry. You don't allow pigs? No. What about the little, the, little, the little ones? Nope. Not even a little one? Nope. Do you, you allow know, pets at all? If I can help it, no. Lawsuits. Oh, really? Lawsuits. What do you mean lawsuits? Uh, let's say I have a, a tenant that has a pit bull. Sure. Pit bull bites the neighbor. Right. The tenant ain't got no money. You're on the, the hook. Yeah, buddy. They can, but it's not your dog. They can still tie but me it's up your in tenant. court, and I have to defend mm. myself. That's how you get broken, man. That's nuts. Yep. That's absolutely nuts. Yep. Hey, this part of the program brought to you by XI Repair. And they're at XI Repair. Jonathan Strange and the team are ready to help you with yes, those are, smartphone John. repairs. They helped you recently? They have helped me. And actually, I've got to take them. i got to get this battery done. Woke up this morning. I was at 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's noon when I got here, a little afternoon. I was down to 32%. Mm. I need a battery. Yeah, so you they need will to be go get that replaced. Yep, yep. And folks, a battery replacement is much cheaper than buying a new phone. If you think, oh, it's not keeping a charge, I got to get a new phone. No. Well, plus, with me, the whole reason I want to do a battery, I don't want to learn a new phone. Right. I don't want to learn that. I don't have time for right. that. So whether it's a cracked screen, battery needing replacement, maybe you have a dirty port that needs to be cleaned Could be. out. Could be it's a desktop or laptop computer you need repaired or mm -hmm. a top-end gaming console like a PlayStation 5. They can even do data recovery services yeah, there. So if you accidentally delete something, they can find it. Or maybe somebody deleted it on purpose and you're in the middle of a lawsuit or something. Mm -hmm. They can find it there at XI Repair. So check them out today. You can always go to XIRepair.com. The letter X, the letter I, repair.com, or give them a call at 777-1234. That's 777-1234. And be sure to tell those fine folks there at XI Repair that Joey and Eddie from News and Views in the afternoon sent you bonus points, I guess, if you say pork chop. Pork chop. And by bonus points, they don't mean anything, but it's fun to just say pork chop randomly and think about a very obese pig. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have the Mayor Montgomery Stephen Reed here after the break. Y'all stay tuned. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. With SRN News, I'm John Scott. Los Angeles motorists are experiencing traffic snarls as crews assess how much damage was caused by a weekend fire that closed a major elevated interstate near downtown. Interstate 10 will be closed indefinitely. The GOP presidential candidate field just got smaller. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott has announced that he's dropping out of the 2024 race. Battles around hospitals have forced thousands of Palestinians to flee from some of the last shelters in northern Gaza. Israel says Hamas terrorists shield themselves among civilians, and that Shifa Hospital, Gaza's largest, is a prime example. 
On Wall Street, the Dow had 38 points. The Nasdaq is 32 points in the red. This is SRN News. Donald Trump's indictment proves that saving America is not going to be easy. There are entrenched powers that are fighting this with everything they've got. They want to keep control over the country, the narrative, and the nation's money supply. Hi, I'm Lance Wall now. I'm a news analyst, a Christian author, and evangelical leader. I speak to millions of people every week, people just like you. You see, what the elites are doing is using inflation and government handouts and now central bank digital currencies to determine how they're going to control America. And that's why I recommend all Christians start a gold IRA from the Birch Gold Group, because physical precious metals are one of the few ways you can maintain control over your own savings. To get a free info kit on gold IRAs, text the word FAITH to 989898. Birch Gold Group is the only gold company I trust. Get their free info kit and you'll see why a gold IRA can help you. There are no strings attached. Text the word FAITH to 989898 and you're going to be blessed by taking action right now. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Rich Thomas Weather. Well, hi, everybody. Dry start to the week today, but that won't last long. Today is high temperature in the upper 60s, partial sunshine, but considerable cloudiness. Then the risk of more rain begins late tonight, low 53. Tomorrow and Wednesday, periods of rain, breezy, cool, high near 60 tomorrow and Wednesday. Looks like a potential soaker. We do need the rain, though. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. The MVP on a football field may change on any given Saturday, but the MVP in every other field is a Kubota. John Bobo with Capital Tractor. With the number one selling compact tractor in America, Kubota equipment is a game changer. Capital Tractor, Montgomery, Brundage, and Greenville. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, here's today's top stories. A man involved in a two-vehicle crash Thursday has died. The accident occurred on I-65 North near West South Boulevard. The unidentified victim was taken to a local hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. The driver of the other vehicle wasn't injured. An investigation is ongoing. Governor Kay Ivey has awarded Montgomery County a half million dollars to rehabilitate 24 occupied houses in the county. And Millbrook will receive over $166,000 to demolish abandoned and dilapidated structures. The funds are part of a $17.5 million block grant from the federal government. In college football, Auburn won their third in a row Saturday, trouncing Arkansas 48 to 10. The Tigers became bowl eligible with the win. Meanwhile, Jalen Milrow accounted for six touchdowns as number eight Alabama cruised past Kentucky to clinch the SEC West Division title. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, I'm Sky Mosley. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368 an equal housing lender. Exit Realty is growing. Exit Realty focuses on everything it takes to make a real estate office successful and provides opportunity to brokers and agents unlike any other real estate brand. Training, technology, an opportunity to earn an exceptional income and even retire and leave a legacy and benefits for your family. Interested in a great real estate career? Text BAMA to 85377 to learn more. That's BAMA to 85377. Hello, it's Robin Roberts here. Hey guys, it's George Stephanopoulos here. Hey everybody, it's Michael Strahan here. Wake up with Good Morning America. Robin, George, Michael, GMA, America's favorite number one morning show. The morning's first breaking news, exclusive interviews, what everyone will be talking about that day. Put some good in your morning and start your day with GMA. Good morning, America. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. 
Yes? Howdy, ma'am. I'm Bill, the electrician. Oh, hello, Bill. Say, I like your houndstooth hat. Bama fan? Well, sort of. Oh, you're also wearing a War Eagle sweatshirt and a Troy jacket. Yeah, well, I grabbed a hot wire last week. <laughs> kind of scrambled my brain. Electricity is nothing to trifle with. That's why you only want electricians who are safety conscious and code compliant, like the experts at Crosby Electric. Okay, ma'am, you take this two by four, and, and if you notice I ain't saying much, give me a good knock on the head. What? All Crosby Electric team members are trained to make safety our number one priority to avoid dangerous situations. All ready to go, ma'am. Just have to connect this wire and... Oh! Bill, are you okay? Oh, yeah. Good as new. Yeah, sure. Who's your favorite team? Um, pistachio? Don't take chances with electricity. Call the experts at Crosby Electric or visit us at crosbyelectric.com. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. Joey Clark. Welcome back, folks. The news and views in the afternoon. I'm your host, Joey Clark. Eddie Bader still in the house. And now, as promised, we have the mayor of Montgomery himself, Stephen Reed, right across the desk from me. Mr. Mayor, how are you doing today? I'm good once I get these headphones on. Yeah, they oh, can those, be, there we go. Uh, yeah. Those things are miserable. Damn. I can't stand that brand. <laughs> but how you doing? Man, I've been doing well. Getting ready for uh, the big day tomorrow for the city of Montgomery and the inauguration for uh, the city council and the mayor. So looking forward to that. Been a whole lot of stuff going on the last few days. Well, first off, congratulations on the re-election win. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And now, Have I not been in here since then? No, sir. Mm-hmm. Man, you know what? I mean, it, this fall has really gotten away from me. That is amazing. Uh, so I, not last month. No, and wow. I think what happened, because, you know, not too much inside, but Griff left, and there is a little... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People okay. are like, how do I get in touch with that Joey guy? Okay. Like, <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, yeah, thanks. I, I appreciate the uh, well wishes on the election, but we were glad to have it won and done. Uh, there you go. And, yeah, no runoff, nothing like yeah. that. Uh, now, as you look ahead, with inauguration date being tomorrow, and yeah. you look ahead in, in the next term, what are some of the top priorities you see? Well, you know, we've got to continue the economic uh, success that we've had. You know, now that we hit 1.7 billion and, and we set a record there, we want to. Uh, so we're not satisfied with, with that. And, um, you know, we want to continue the, the growth and progress of the city and of this uh, overall economy and diversifying the economy. It's very, very important for us to bring in talent and to keep the smart people that are in our city, in our region and going to schools in our state we've got to be a better player there and then the the second thing is we got to make sure that we're investing in uh our urban core our Mm. city not just west montgomery which certainly uh the four million dollars that congressman terry sewell appropriate will help us but uh we got to make sure that we're investing in the city itself and all of the uh structures that need it whether it be continued help for public education public health and infrastructure very very important for us uh and along with that goes neighborhood renewal uh we've got to have that and we've got some projects we were just talking about this morning um that are we're in very very good position for we got two projects really that we're in very good position for one maybe a little bit further down the line than the other and then finally we've got to make sure that from a tourism standpoint we're keeping up so Mm -hmm. we're the number one visited uh, city in the state of Alabama for international tourists. Oh, that's cool. So I was not aware of that. I didn't know that. Uh, Is that the uh, Legacy Museum? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it's everything EJI related. But right. uh, we've got people that are coming here with a lot of money and no place to spend it. Oh, come on. Mm-hmm. So we can help them with that. Uh, tell, tell me about <laughs> it. Uh, I'm sure our new city council is going to like that as well. So 
we're going to be looking at um, expanding the convention center, um, downtown arena, things that we've got to have in your core downtown in 2020. And I know this is 2023, but things you've got to have in your core downtown if you're going to keep visitors coming back. And if they, you know, they pay so much to our economy from the airport to rental cars to small businesses, retailers, obviously um, hotel nights and stays, gas, all of those things fund our city government. So right now we're not where we need to be, and we'll be rolling out in the first quarter a uh, big project around this convention center, how we expand it to uh, be able to receive more larger conventions. They already want to come, but right. we, we have to tell have the them no. Form. We don't have the space. Okay. We don't have the hotels. And nowadays you've got to make sure that your convention space is like our smartphones. I mean, you. I mean, if anybody's been to a concert yeah. recently, yep. you've got to have all the lights, bells, and whistles, or you're just not going to get it. But they want to come, which is a great, great start. And I'll be speaking to a group later on this evening about why we want them to come back. Um, so those are going to be the three things, economic development, um, you know, infill, uh, investments, and then making sure, again, that our policies uh, match our talk as it relates to poverty and income inequality and some of the gaps that we have to make sure we close here in the city and in the region itself. That makes sense. Now, uh, one thing, and I was mentioning it to you off air, uh, I just did a trek up to Greenville, South Carolina to visit my brother, yeah. brand new baby niece. Oh, first, congratulations. Yeah, and it's the first in this generation, so it's all very new to all of us. It's pretty amazing. It does, are you the godfather? Uh, uncle. All right. Yeah. Well, I know uncle, but are you the are you the guy? Are you I, don't know. I don't yet? think I'm the godfather. You got to lie before that status now. If you're <laughs> uncle, not the godfather. Say something about you. There's a little deficiency there. Well, I'll oh, work on it. I'll step it up, on. Joey. Step it up. You come to me on the day of my daughter's <laughs> wedding. All right. But I, you know, walking around Greenville, I, I kind of went, "Dad, gum, uh, Montgomery's got to step it up." Yes. And I don't think it's like Montgomery. I think it has the same assets. It could be beautiful. Like yeah, it's, it's no a beautiful place, part yeah. of the world. But I, I know Greenville started making changes at the turn of the 20th century. Thank you. So, like, and I know you've y'all have done trips there. It's it's a yeah. comparable sized city. So, uh, what sort of steps can be taken now to give due credit? I remember working with Dan Morris for years, Margaret Carpenter, his mother. Yeah. Downtown, when you and I were kids, it looks a lot better now than it did when yeah. we were coming up. But there's new steps to be taking uh, taken here. So, like. You already laid it out kind of generally, but what are some specific things that yeah. can be, keep expanding that urban center? Well, listen, as it relates to downtown, I, I can't stress this enough. Um, in, in today's economic development market and tourism market, you've got to have a urban core. You can have everything you want in the burbs, and that's fine. That's never going to stop. Uh, you're not competing with the burbs, per se, uh, as any city core. You've got to make sure you have a city center that people want to work in, play in, and live in, and hopefully all three, mm -hmm. right? But you've got to make sure that you've got an urban core that uh, meets that. And one of the things that Greenville did when we took our uh, city leadership there and, and county leaders and chamber and business leaders is they talked about planning. Uh, we've got a, you know two or three people not planning department. They've got 12. Mm -hmm. um, they've been investing in federal funding and making sure they're going after uh, dollars at the federal and state level in a way that Montgomery never has until about the last four years. Huntsville has. It's important for us to contrast this even in terms of cities in, inside the state of Alabama. Mm. Huntsville, I was told five years ago, had the best approach to federal funding of any city in this state. Uh, Birmingham uh, was a distant, well, I shouldn't say distant. During the second, Mobile third, we were a distant fourth, I was told, mm. uh, when I first got in office. So we got to make sure that we're tapping into those federal funds. We're tapping into those philanthropic partners that are coming here with Equal Justice Initiative. And that as a city, we're cutting out the red tape and we're modernizing our approach to planning and development. So we're updating our uh, zoning and subdivision ordinance for the first time since y'all want to guess? 1965. 63. Really? Woo. Not wow. far. Well, that's a different close? world, too. Totally wow. different world. And so, <laughs> you know, when we haven't updated things, I mean, that that's negligence in the part of the city over decades. We're not talking about over years. Right. Not to do that, right? And so the second part of that is we've got to make sure as a community that we have those instruments to utilize new market tax credits and other things that investors 
and developers really want to make it easy for them to get into your city, to rehab a building, mm -hmm. um, to expand um, any type of office spaces or even demo it and build something new so that we have more of a uh, Greenville, South Carolina feel to our downtown. When we went there, it was a Sunday afternoon evening. It was about 6 o'clock when mm -hmm. we got there. And we met with all of the – we met with the mayor and the planning, economic development folks, a lot of community leaders. But Sunday at 6, I think, is what everybody talks about because it was like a Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock. I mean, it mm, was wow. an amazing buzz. Uh, and they said that was a light crowd. They said, you should have gotten here earlier. And I'm thinking, do you, is this a festival? Is it something? It was just a normal Sunday in Greenville, South oh, Carolina. Wow. Not Atlanta, you know, not you know New Orleans or, or big city USA. Right. Just a city like that. And we've got to make sure that we change the mindset and we change the approach to how we do things here and not just settle – uh, for where we have been in the past. Well, and it sounds like with getting federal funds, it, there's, of course, you can rely on um, somebody like Congresswoman Sewell, or I'd imagine uh, U.S. Senator Brett being she's from this area. Yeah. Uh, real quick on that, how important, whether it's a Democrat or Republican in this District 2 race, how important would that be if you had a member of Congress from Montgomery and essentially a United States Senator from Montgomery? Oh, that would be um, a game changer. I mean, just having the senator here. I mean, that's the first time since Lister Hill was a senator, which goes back how many, what, over 50, 60 yeah. years now, um, that Montgomery has been home to a senator. So it is very, very important um, to have her here. She knows the process. She's been a staffer. And usually those are a lot of people that you find are more successful over the long term because they know the ins and outs yep. uh, of how things work. Uh, to have a congressman based out of here is significant. And I think for us, whether it's a Democrat or Republican as a mayor, uh, I just want them to be, I want them not to take a ear, no earmarks pledge. And I said this to Barry Moore. I said, you know, that, that money's going to go somewhere. Now, it can go to Blue State and Blue City, or it can come to, you know, Blue City, <laughs> Red City, and Red State. It's going to go somewhere. So in a state that's as financially strapped as we are, we need every dollar we can get from the federal government. Now, you know, in Alabama, we tend to take money and then curse them later. But nonetheless, you know, we want the money that we can utilize for, you know, infrastructure improvements, uh, pedestrian-friendly spaces, m more green spaces. It may be things around climate and energy, all of those things that are being funded at a high level federally. Those are things we need because it's hard to get them out of our state budget, and we don't have the, the money in the local budget to do them ourselves. Now, and it sounds like this is, you, when you went down the list of Huntsville, Birmingham, Mobile, and where we are in terms of getting federal funds, it's not just the elected members of Congress that are very important, but is it just a process that's set up within the city itself so you can jump on certain grants or... Is it a matter of just having that ready to go within well, your city? Well, two things. We didn't have a bipartisan Washington, D.C.-based lobby firm before I got in office. Mm. So, you know, go figure. Um, but we, we had a, you know, we kind of did like every other city did. We relied on Senator Shelby. That was the plan. All right. Well, every other city is doing that, and, and rightfully so, for years. But where do you kind of fall in that pecking order? It's very hard. you got to have a holistic plan to lobby in Washington. So when I've been asked... You know, why have I spent so much time up there is because of the money that we've gotten back from Maxwell Air Force Base, money we've gotten back for the city, West Montgomery, money we've gotten back for other projects that, that we're doing throughout this entire community. But you can't just lobby Senator Shelby or Senator Tuberville uh, or now, you know, in this case, Senator Britt. You've got to be able to lobby the agencies. You've got to know what the grant dollars are and the programs are. And I was told that coming in that Huntsville has known how to do that. And Huntsville has, you know, been the best at it for a number of years. And listen, it shows along with the fact that Huntsville has a robust local budget, you know, much more over $75 billion more than what we have, even though we're a city comp of comparable size. So you got to understand how Washington works. You've got to be able to deal with the, you know, the balance of the power tilting from one way to the other without losing your stride in terms of what you're trying to do for your city. And that's been our approach for the last four years. I think it's proven to be very successful, and we'll continue to do that. And certainly uh, we appreciate, you know, having a hometown senator there, but we know it takes more than that because she's got to take care of the whole state. There you go. Again, we're talking to Mayor Stephen Reed, 272-9228, if you have a question or comment and want to get in on the conversation. we got to hit a quick break. Yeah. And 
uh, more when we come back. Joey Clark. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Next contestant. (sighs) Honey, you look confused. What's wrong? I'm having a hard time remembering to take my medications like I'm supposed to. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to worry you. I'm glad you told me because I heard that Adams Drugs has a medicine on time service that will package your monthly medications and make them easier to manage. Our neighbors, Bill and Leslie, mentioned the other day that they use Adams and how they have made it so easy for them to manage their medications. Do you think we can call Adams Drugs or go by there and see if they can help me? I don't want to get to the point where you have to put me into an assisted living home. Why don't you get your medications together right now and let's go down to Adams and talk to the pharmacist. How much does the medicine on time service cost? I asked Bill that same question, and he told me it's a free service for Adam's customers. Free? Wow, I'm feeling really good about this already. Let me grab my meds list. Call Adam's Drugs Medicine on time for your pharmacist consultation. Visit us at adamsdrugs.net for more information on our medicine on time packaging service. Are you tired of the mainstream media's biased reporting? Do you want to stay informed on the news that really matters to you? Look no further than 1819 News. At 1819 News, we bring you the latest in Alabama news, politics, sports, culture, and more. We've assembled a team of journalists with Alabama values dedicated to the truth and the truth alone. Visit us at 1819news.com today. That's 1819news.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. Honest News, Alabama Values. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. All the headlines the mainstream media won't touch. Your News Talk Station. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon. Again, our guest this hour is Mayor Montgomery, Stephen Reed. And uh, one thing real quick, just to understand what happened. Uh, It was in the news, the back and forth. There was a a bill that created essentially neutrality where certain flags or symbols would be, you know, essentially the American flag, the city flag, the state flag, nothing else in terms of causes that was passed you vetoed it and mm-hmm. then the council who's on their way out right now they overdid your veto mm-hmm. so what, what was going on here with this whole back and forth because I, I think the story starts with was it william green with the christian heritage flag and yeah. one in christian heritage month what what happened here well i think you know i don't know what um william green's uh, agenda was but i, I think it was um bad for the outgoing council to pass that right before the new council comes in. Typically, the council goes out, you know, just kind of in a celebratory fashion, right? And whatever is kind of left undone, new council gets a chance to take that up on, on their own uh, volition. And for us as a city to get caught in something up with uh, Councilman uh, Lyons and, and those guys kind of bringing that up, I think was 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 bad decision making, and I think it's something that the new council really ought to ought to, ought to reconsider, um, because it comes with some unintended consequences that people don't quite understand. Uh, we've already gotten feedback about well, you know, if you all don't believe in this, and as a city, you know, then maybe we're going to sue you for putting up Christmas displays. Maybe we're going to sue you for putting up other displays for other organizations. Uh, maybe breast cancer awareness. Uh, it may be sickle cell awareness. I mean, you can go down the list of things. And so when you get in that space, I, I, I have a problem with that because I think it's really um, not well focused in terms of what the council really should be uh, doing with its time. And this was a councilman who really hadn't brought a lot of, of ideas to the table in, in, in four years. And so to 
kind of drop a grenade, as I would say, you know, and then, then walk out and leave it for a new council just wasn't, uh, you know, good business, in my opinion. And I think for a city that is really trying, that benefits tremendously from uh, the civil rights movement, the city has an obligation, has a responsibility to make sure that we are actually practicing what we profit off of. Um, Brian Stevens and Eagle Justice Initiative have been single biggest catalyst in the last 20 years in the cities in terms of tourism, economic development growth. So what does it look like that you got people from all around the world coming here, but your practices don't jive with it? And it kind of, uh, from, from my standpoint, kind of, you know, smirks of, you know, you pimping the civil rights movement for the profit, but you're really not as a city where you say you are. And I think those are, are you know, big issues that I, I mean, I just th those are issues that I have a problem with because I think the city is there. I think the city really wants to move forward and turn the page and be more open and inclusive. And I think there's a very small minority uh, that is loud and vocal that, you know, sees us as being Mayberry. And you ain't going to get no tech companies and you ain't going to, I'm talking like this for, for a reason. You mm. ain't going to get the talent that Huntsville has doing the things that uh, we're doing. You're not going to grow like that because it's too many, it's too much competition among cities. Now I'm on the board of trustees for the U S conference of mayors. Uh, I'm the first vice president for the African American mayors association. I have been asked to be on the board for the national league of cities. Why do I bring all those things up? Cause I taught the mayors and city councilmen of all parties of all races from across this country. And I know those cities of all sizes, shades and stripes, what they're doing well, what they want to do better, and what things they have put in place to change the perception. I'll give you a case in point, and I'll, I'll let you get to your next uh, issue. Yeah. Talking to a mayor who's a Republican, uh, I said, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, the city was X, Y, and Z. How did you guys, you know, blow up? Now you're on all these lists that I'm seeing, and um, you know, now I haven't been in office since 2012. I've got a little frame of reference in terms of government. And he served in various roles in the city, served in their state legislature now as mayor. And he said, we made a decision that we wanted to grow. He said, we made a decision that some of the old guard uh, and some of the fathers of the city who had been doing things a certain way just was not helping us move forward. And we made a decision that we were going to change that. And he said, there were a lot of things we had to do. And he said, Mayor, he said, you know, it's the best thing that we've done. He said, wasn't easy. He said, was not easy at all. He said, but we have seen just an uptick in young people and college educated graduates. And then our best and brightest who never come here would have gone to the next regional capital. Now talking about coming back from in-state schools. And he said, for us, that's how we reverse it over the last, you know, 12 to 15 years. And I think things like this kind of set us back when we're trying to make sure we grow and we're trying to make we're trying to make sure that the companies that come here who already have a perception about Alabama. Yeah, it's cheap to do business there. But tell me about what, what's beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. It's important for us not to feed into that perception if we want to not only hit two billion in the next year, but two and a half and three billion and so forth and keep that train going. And I think when you look at, again, those cities that are growing and where young people and I don't mean that they're just right out of college, but from 21 to 35, those mm -hmm. folks who are your future YMCA mm -hmm. board members, those people who are your future United Way contributors, those people who are your future uh, museum uh, contributors as well and donors, they're looking at things whether we believe that or not. And as the leadership of, of the city and, and talking to mayors, I try to take best practices economically some that are center right. I try to take best practices that are uh, socially and policy, some that are center left, uh, and you mix them up. And this is kind of what you come out with is hopefully a, a recipe for success, but one that's to grow because we can't keep on this track and not only maintain our position here in Alabama, maintain our position regionally and nationally. There's no way for us to do that uh, without understanding what they're doing in the Carolinas, what they're doing in Oklahoma, what they're doing in the Inland Empire of California, uh, in Ohio and Missouri and these places, 
you got to know what's happening because whether you like it or not in Georgia, that's who we're competing with. And it really, you know, shakes out. Indiana doing a fantastic job, by the way, mm-hmm. um, in particular probably the last five to ten years. It's not just a Hoosier state anymore. And, no, and these are things that I've shared with our state leaders, business and political, that we've got to understand where these states are and make sure that we're doing the same because if not, we're going to lose that doctor, we're going to lose that engineer, we're going to lose that dentist, we're going to lose that teacher and that police officer to those other cities uh, that really have some other things going than than what we have ourselves. And I imagine this is uh, certain cultural issues, certain corporations (laughs) are going to have certain demands, but then there's also the, we were just talking a little bit off air, the nuts and bolts of having you know certain things they're looking for in terms of taxes in terms yeah. of uh, just basic infrastructure that allows them to come on in and do what they do yeah but it's not always you know cheap right and, right. and i've said this a lot i may have even said it before here you know being a low-cost leader works for walmart um <laughs> it doesn't work for for most other folks and it works for walmart for a number of different reasons uh why they're successful uh scale and scope being you know prime among them but for companies now what they will tell you is what is there to do go back to my my government white water what's the climate what's the culture and people come here kick the tires when we don't know they're kicking the tires and so it's important what's said on these airways it's important in terms of what's uh printed in our newspaper on our on our websites we get told that after the fact that you know we kick the tires (laughs) and here's some things we liked here's some things we didn't now we've had a great year but we also missed some too Hmm. Um, and so we, we try to get those takeaways as to, you know, what's the what's the concern and what's the priority for you as a site selector. Uh, and then for, again, you know, talking to graduating students, medical students right out here at Baptist South, uh, undergraduate students that are at, at our uh, area universities. You ask them, you know, what are you looking for? You'd be amazed at what it is they're looking for versus what I was looking for when I came out of college. Very, very radical things. Those, this generation picks the place, then the job. Mm. We, people, I'm older than you, Joey, so let, let me, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting the OG status now. But, you know, uh, we picked, the job picked us, and then we picked the place, right? Can I go right. to one of these three cities? Yeah. But now they go to the city first, and they pick the job. And that is important when you're talking about an aging population like we have here, and one that we're trying to uh, really rebuild the talent pool. Again, folks are talking to Mayor Stephen Reed, and uh, we got another quick break. But in a second, when we come back, you mentioned in the first segment uh, more support for public education around here. Yeah. Then uh, it's a long-term problem affecting all sorts of cities. But let's get the latest on uh, police recruitment and how that's sort of going. Oh, there. it's going well. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll get into the it. details. After, all right. After Good break. deal. know whether he's coming or going but whether you're going to work or coming home greg budell is there mornings six till nine and afternoons three till six only on news talk 93.1 fm wacv hey everybody this is dr sam and i am so excited to tell you the last car i bought it came from riverside chevrolet now get a load of this not only do they have a friendly staff that will answer any question at riverside they also have a finance department second to none and a service department that's rated number one Anything from pre-love to brand spanking new, cars, trucks, vans, they have it all. And at Riverside Chevrolet, you get first-class service. Check them out on the web at RiversideUSA.net or check them out on Facebook. Great reviews, you'll love it. Actor portrayal, based on a real patient experience. I'm Mike. I'm a husband, proud father of two, work my butt off six days a week, some nights too. When my family or my company needs me to make it happen, I make it happen. But a few months ago, I started having trouble making it happen, you know, in the bedroom. I tried some pills online, but they didn't work. Honestly, I thought about throwing in the towel on my sex life, but I'm not that old. I still want to enjoy intimacy with my wife. Like that poet said, I don't want to just go gently into that good night. So I went to Montgomery Men's Health, got some lab work done, was prescribed some meds, and wow, it made it happen. I can't say enough good about them. They took care of me, followed up, 
and made adjustments to make it happen even better. I even learned I had low testosterone, which they were also treating me for, and I have never felt better. If I were you and you're like me, I'd give them a call today at 334-440-3663 or go to MontgomeryMensHealth.com. If you like most guys, they'll make it happen for you too. This is your roving reporter, and today I'm talking with a famous broadcaster. Uh, hey man, what's happening? Now, I understand you radio people move a lot, is that correct? Yeah, sometimes. Well, how does this affect your taking care of your retirement money? Oh man, I don't give that a second thought, because my buddy David Ernest, he's my money man. Your money man? With the money plan. I see. So, no matter where I go up and down the dial, David has my back, you know? I'll bet you know some phone numbers our listeners could call to talk with David Ernest. 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. And he has a website at retirewithernest.com. Hey, you're on top of it today, man. I also understand that you hold some sort of a record in broadcasting. Ah, uh, yes. I was the first person to put together a show with myself, a duck, a chicken, and a goose. But it didn't last long we got taken off the air. Why were you taken off the air? Uh, too much foul language, man. Oh, my. So I wasn't crazy about that one myself. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. The Rich Thomas Weather Network is brought to you by the Johnny Adams Law Firm. Whether rain or shine, be a defensive driver. It's the best way to safely arrive. Enjoy the drive and the weather from the Johnny Adams Law Firm. Rich Thomas Weather. Well, hi, everybody. Dry start to the week today, but that won't last long. Today is high temperature in the upper 60s, partial sunshine, but considerable cloudiness. Then the risk of more rain begins late tonight, low 53. Tomorrow and Wednesday, periods of rain, breezy, cool, high near 60 tomorrow and Wednesday. Looks like a potential soaker. We do need the rain, though. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. For the lowest prices around on flooring and DIY flooring installation supplies, Budget Floors and More is your new best friend. Luxury vinyl plank, carpet, ceramic tile, floor installation supplies, and more with prices lower than the big box stores. Budget Floors and More, Hunter Lane, across from Delray to Publix. We get Montgomery talking 24 hours a day. The River Region's most trusted voice. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Back to news and views in the afternoon. Again, our guest for this hour, Mayor Stephen Reed. And uh, what well, were we left off in terms of? Uh, recruitment is going very well. Chief Albert and, and his leadership team are doing a great job as well. Um, at his suggestion, my request was, you know, we added signing bonuses and retention bonuses. That's helped us. Uh, I think we're going to have to go back and probably increase them a little bit because as soon as we did that, Another city came right back and did a little bit more. Um, but nonetheless, we're, we're there. And then we, we changed our recruitment strategy. We expanded the area that we were recruiting from. And, you know, we kind of changed up even a little bit of the technology in terms of um, advertising our job. So, you know, if you're someone out there that may be in Ohio or you could be in Pennsylvania, uh, if you're clicking on something around public safety, uh, then we increase our marketing to kind of say, well, have you thought about Montgomery? Have you thought about NPD? Well, you know, we all know about geofencing these yep. days, right? Yep. And the cookies. If it can send me something that, um, you know, I need a new suit or a new necktie, then why not, you know, send right. something to that person that is thinking about it? Because what you'll also hear, and again, being on the Public Safety Committee for the National League of Cities, uh, is that there's a shortage across the country in the talent pool mm -hmm. and police consultants most of them who are former sheriffs or police chiefs are telling all the mayors that that the talent pool is not there and so we're going to have to be more creative and then we're going to have to use technology as a force multiplier but i think the next class is larger than the, the next class by itself is larger than the class we had all of last year uh combined so it's it's paying off and uh, then we just got to work on, you know, retaining those folks that we want to be a part of the organization and um, then recruiting some others, maybe from other states uh, to come join us and see what the opportunity is like here for promotions and quality of life. 
And now on uh, education, again, it's county system, but the city certainly has a role in promoting that. Yeah. Uh, what can be done with public education? Well, one, I think it's uh, important for us to recognize we've got three of the top 20 schools, um, you know, yeah. in, in this state in our magnet school. So let's start with the positive. I think Amen. often we start with the negative, And it's something that I try to talk to a lot of groups about is you push that. The second thing is um, they're going to be expanding or have maybe started this year, but their application pool. So there will be more applicants that are that are allowed to uh, that are admitted into the magnet program. That's fantastic. The second thing is uh, or the next thing is that, you know, we are investing in skills training and we want to make sure for those young people who may not see a four year college in their future, may not even be sure about a two year college that they can get those skills training uh, and that we do those through apprenticeships and other programs. Uh, MPS has been a great partner for us in that, and we're really excited to see how that blossoms. Now, the challenges um, also come from the standpoint that, you know, MPS will just start receiving their monies for the property tax increase in 2024. Right? right. So it was passed in 2020. Right. The legislature held that. Now, they didn't hold that for Pike Road. So, again, when people ask me, you know, well, what's going on? It's like there are two sets of rules here. Um, Pike Road was able to get their money right away. Our public school system, even though passed in 2020, you know, was only able to get that. We'll be getting that in 2024. That's an issue. Uh, so none of the dollars that we Passed to be allocated, which is an additional $33 million, have been implemented. Now, I'm sure the school system has um, planned for those uh, that additional revenue to come, but now I can tell you this from the city side what you thought you could buy for a million dollars in 2020 yeah. and 2021 yeah. is much, much different than 2023 and 2024. Uh, inflation has changed tremendously, a lot of pressure uh, on the supply chains and the economic market. So my understanding is that they will have to kind of go back to the drawing board, but some of the plans are going to be adjusted because the monies that they thought they would have for projects is not there. And some of it was broken up for more resource officers, more like actual oh, folks, professionals. Yeah, it's not but all then, capital improvement. But a lot of it was capital improvements. Yeah. And that, I mean, we saw what the state tried to do prisons. Yep. <laughs> like their Lord. budget for two is now just about one, which Absolutely. is crazy. It, it, it is that. But I, I think the school board and I think uh, Superintendent uh, Melvin Brown is doing a great job with that and, and working with what we do have. But listen, you know, I, I'm under no illusion that turning around public schools uh, is going to be an overnight thing. We've got to continue to work at it. We've got to continue to partner with the businesses in the community, our faith organizations, and continue to work with our parents and be patient that this is a different generation of parents than what we may have had. Uh, that has different challenges and struggles and be willing to meet them where they are. And I think as long as we keep the kids first, we'll be successful. We just have to make sure that we aren't talking about things that are just from the standpoint of it's just Montgomery uh, that's having this issue. Right. Birmingham has these challenges. Uh, Huntsville City Schools has some of these challenges. We're going to have to work around them, work through them, and I think that we can continue to uh, build on the platform or the foundation that we have for public education under our current leadership. And then another you mentioned is public health, which uh, I, I, you're kind of preaching to the converted because what I saw during COVID, it, it's like we're being fed in, all sorts yeah. of rural folks being fed into the city. And uh, luckily we had some flex capacity, but uh, when you look at public health, what sort of assets are you talking about? Well, we've got to make sure that our hospitals are solvent and our healthcare system is solvent. Uh, Jackson Hospital is under duress right now. Um, we, we're going to have to come together, community leaders, uh, maybe even along with the state to figure out how we help them. And then we have to look at long term what we do to help solidify its position, not just for the city of Montgomery, uh, for uh, the confidence of our military presence here uh, and also for the confidence of our job recruitment. Again, I go back to, you know, if you don't have, um, you know, specialists that can deal with uh, young people and, and kids who have um it may be autistic or may have some other challenges. Pe parents make decisions on, on, on that, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
people want to know that, hey, if I bring my workforce here, that you have the specialists that are needed. Guess what? If you can't prove and show them the data that you do, you're taking off the list and you can give as many incentives, as much incentives or abatements as you want. Um, that's quality of life uh, that comes into play because those are things that are going to impact whether or not those they're able to recruit and retain employees or bring the employees they currently have with them. Right. And then finally, I'll say the region uh, depends on Montgomery from a uh, health care standpoint because of the closure of rural hospitals. Make, make no mistake about that. At least 80 miles out is depending on this region. And uh, we're at a dramatic shortage for what is needed. And it doesn't get the headlines. It does not get the attention that other hot button issues get. But I will tell you, in my opinion, it's one of the more clear and present dangers we have to our growth as a city and as a region as anything. And okay. we've got to take it seriously. And we're going to have to have some conversations before the end of the year, certainly at the top of next year, with community leaders about how we stabilize this and much like public education, how we put it on solid ground. Let's go to the phone and talk to Victor. Victor, you're on with Mayor Stephen Reed. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mayor. Hey, Victor, how you doing? I am a, uh, I'm well, I'm well. I'm a, a property owner here, lives inside the yeah. uh, bypass, and I have an issue with parking in the yard. Cars oh, and trucks yeah. and tractor yeah. trailer trucks in the yes, yard, sir. in the driveway. And if I do it, well, I get ticketed something, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't do it. But I've called downtown and been told, well, there's nothing we can do. Well, I spoke to an officer uh, just two days ago, was watching a stop sign around the corner and asked her if, if she wouldn't mind uh, trying to help us out a little bit. And she said that that was something that she could do, but, uh, well, well uh, there it is. Let, let me, can let we me do something yes, with that? And I'll hang yes, up and listen on the radio. Yes, sir. We thank can you, certainly sir. do something about it. And I thank you for the question. Uh, we are, have act, we're actually expanding and growing our code enforcement team, building code team, uh, to get out there and do just that. Because I've noticed it. I noticed it right in my neighborhood, in my immediate neighborhood. I won't name the house. Uh, <laughs> so I know exactly what you're talking about. And um, when I was first told that, you know, we couldn't do anything, I said, well, that's not a, you know, that's not a um, answer that we're going to accept. Let's let's figure out what we need to do because it impacts image, again, perception, yep. property values, all those things. And then it came up. Uh, at city council meeting, I think it was either Councilman Calhoun or Councilman Mitchell who brought up that folks in South Montgomery were, um, you know, really upset about these 18 wheelers parking in these shopping center lots. And what we had on the books was an outdated ordinance that uh, we needed to not only update the ordinance, but here's the other thing we got to update the fine and the penalty mm. because the fines and penalties, again, back parking to that 1963, yeah, <laughs> it's not getting anyone's attention. Right. And so we're going to have to change that, and we're in the process of going through that so we can comply legally. Uh, a lot of times when people come to city council, and they bring up an issue like this. You know, we go through the um, ordinances, and we see we have it on the books, where we need to tweak it or improvement, or if we don't, how do we create it? And once we do that, it's a matter of, you know, is it legal? So um, we're in that last phase. But, yes, we budget for at least triple the amount of code of force, which isn't much. I think we had two, and now we'll have six. But the goal is to get them in there out into neighborhoods along with uh, community um, and property owners like yourself giving us clues on where they are um, and what the address is. We plan to be out there right away uh, giving them those notices, and uh, they're going to see those fines increase. So the next time I'm on, uh, keep me posted or let Joey know uh, how we're coming like give us a couple of months to get get that codified and then uh, i think by the beginning of the year you'll see us rolling out there and uh, putting some stickers and some notices on cars a little bit of a fatter um find than what we have right now there you go now let's go to jimmy hey jimmy you're on with the mayor of montgomery Stephen reed hey uh thank you for taking my call yes uh, sir i just had a couple of questions i wanted to address to the mayor mm -hmm. there and see if he can I help out my um my cousin was involved in a hit and run there at Taylor Road and mm. Atlanta Highway. Wow. And uh, it was a rear end thing, and the guy was in a pickup truck, and he just left. And he went through one of the residential areas that had neighborhood cameras. Mm. Well, um, 
she went to try to find out with the neighborhood cameras they could identify the person. But they said all those neighborhood cameras were only accessible by the police department. And uh, she contacted the police department. This occurred back in February. And uh, she has yet to hear anything back as far as accessing that to, you know, get that person to pay for damage and all. And I'm just wondering if uh, what would be the correct approach to that? Is there somebody uh, that should be addressed to? Yeah, it should be uh, traffic enforcement. And if um, you want to call my office, uh, 625-2004. Uh, 625-2000, um, give them a call and leave your name and your number. And if you have any information on that um, hit and run, we'll figure out what happened and we'll make sure we get a call back to you in the next 24 to 48 hours. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I had another question. Yes, sir. Uh, dealing with the uh, court square, the fountain down there. Uh-huh. I know you, you've been involved a lot at the seen you on TV with the uh, veterans and support of the veterans and all, and I think that's real good because uh, because the Maxwell and Gunners has an extra importance to the area. Yes, sir. If uh, maybe should something be um, placed around there, I know the Black Lives Matter has uh, has a designated area there, but they've had so much negative publicity, and I, I think if that could be replaced by some tribute to the veterans there, I think would be, a, a, uh, you know, something helpful for the community and, you know, not really divide the community, but unite the community through the military. And that's a, you know, strong part of, and uh, see if something like that could be done. Yeah. Well, you know, I think we always want to highlight our ties to the, uh, to the military and we plan, you will see a significant, uh, display of us being named one of the top five great American defense communities uh, in this country for the first time in our city's history. Oh, since the first time, I think the contest has been going on for about 25 or more years. Uh, but we've never won it. We've competed several times before. So we're, uh, you know, really glad to have that designation. So you're going to see a big display where that is concerned. And I think as it relates to uh, our veterans, as I said on Saturday, Uh, It's important for us not only just to have a Veterans Day ceremony, but to really do some of the things again that I I see when I I benchmark other cities. uh, Some are out west. I mean, you know, California, Arizona, they've got uh, naval bases and whatnot. Um, It's very interesting, you know, how their city governments have continued to work with veterans. And so we established a military veterans uh, commission. Uh, It was bought in part, you know, to uh, comment that was made I think last year the year before about what were we doing and I thought it was a great check because I went back and said what are we doing and uh, you know we started looking around some of our peer, our organizations and looked at some peer cities and we got this military veterans commission to really help so I want to say that not only do we want to recognize those that serve and highlight our, our uh, connections to the defense community but we also want to make sure we're um, celebrating those who have served each and every day with resources and programming from the city government that we have. And so uh, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the work that the committee has been doing. And I had about four or five people uh, on Saturday down at Riverwalk Stadium say they wanted to join. I said, come on, the more the merrier. We're going to be in a better position because of your feedback and let us know how we can go after some uh, projects that will really be helpful to those uh, veterans right here in our city. I appreciate the call, Jimmy. I'm running out of time here. There Are there, I'm sure, inauguration festivities? Yeah. Somewhere? Well, listen, listen, I'm glad you said that. We will be uh, sworn in tomorrow at 10 a.m. I mean, I'm telling you, it seems like it was just last week that we were in an election. I mean, it, right. September and October really, really have gotten away from me. Part of that, September, you turn to the budget, and that occupies all of your, your head space and that sort of thing, but... Uh, even since the budget's been passed, I mean, it's um, it's been fast. So anyway, tomorrow the inauguration will be held at the, M- M- the Montgomery Performing Arts Center, Impact, and uh, at 10 a.m. So we want to encourage everyone to come down to this organizational meeting of the council. Uh, we really want them to uh, be a part in government and then come to City Hall at 2 p.m. for a citizen's open house, if you will, to meet the councilman. 
Uh, it is something I didn't appreciate until four years ago when uh, some people came for the first time or had not been. So we're actually now post-COVID finally getting back to looking at how we can open up the office and City Hall a little bit more to the public. And, you know, we want people to just be a part in this new beginning for our city council and those three new members that we have coming on board and, and the six returning as well as myself and what we can do, you know, better together in these next four years. So um, come on out and, and take part. we got plenty of space. That's why we're doing it in impact so people don't have to feel like they're on top of one another. But we really would like to see as many people from our city and our community uh, there at 10 a.m. And we really look forward to that. Well, I appreciate your time today. Hope folks take you up on that tomorrow. And yeah. uh, let's do this again more often. We will definitely do it next month. How about that? Yes, sir. All right. More news and views. We should have Michael Cohen of Cohen's Electronics and Appliances after this quick break. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. You asked, we listened. Rocky Bottom Materials is now offering full-service landscaping and irrigation installation. Do you need landscape renovations or new landscaping for your property? Tired of dragging water hoses all summer to water your lawn? We can help. Let us create your dream landscape and install an automatic sprinkler system. We can solve any drainage issue in your yard. No more dealing with the mud all winter. Call us at 334-215-3704. Schedule an appointment with our professionals. Rocky Bottom, where beauty and functionality are just a call away. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. If it concerns your community, you'll hear about it on News Talk 93.1. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Welcome back to News and Views. In the afternoon, trying to get Michael Cohen of Cohen's Electronics on the line. First, this entire hour has been brought to you by Alabama Home Mortgage. And of course, if you're looking to buy a home, Kim Williams has put together a great team. She can help you out there. But also at Alabama Home Mortgage, you're helping folks looking to refinance. You know, with credit card debts being what they are and with the average APR being something like 29%, Kim and Alabama Home Mortgage can help you out if you have that value built up in your home and get out from under that debt. They really do provide great options, especially for veterans. They're VA Home Loan certified there at Alabama Home Mortgage. So call up Kim and her team today at 567-4223. That's 567-4223. You can also visit them on the web. Apply online at myalabamahomemortgage.com. There is a difference in mortgage companies like Kim and Madeline prove that to you today and MLS number 1586368 an equal housing lender and uh, let's go to Michael Cohen of Cohen's Electronics and Appliances hey Michael how are you hey Joey how are y'all doing quite well now um for some reason I just got obsessed with like thinking about new sound audio equipment over the weekend let's remind yeah, folks of the options you have there at Cohen so we sell golden ear we sell paradigm we sell clip speakers all of all of which make some really nice in wall and ceiling speakers as well as floor speakers and bookcase speakers so they also make great subwoofers so depending on what your listening style is you know clips kind of put you on the front row of a, of a concert golden ear puts you back in the middle somewhere it, you know depending on where you want to sit is dependent on the speakers that you should choose uh, we also sell really nice receivers made by a company called Anthem, Integra, uh, and Yamaha. So, you know, you, you kind of, we, we have a good selection of receivers as well as speakers for all your different needs. Well, and of course, they also provide that service uh, for and after the sale there at Cohen. 65 plus years for a reason. You can always go to thinkcohens.com, folks, or Give Michael and the team a call at 277-8890. And you're still there on the boulevard, 2515 Eastern Boulevard near Montgomery? Yes, sir. We're here uh, Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, 9 to 4 on Saturdays. You know, come by and let us ask you a bunch of questions. You ask us a bunch of questions, and 
let us help steer you to the right choice for whatever your needs are. Well, I appreciate the time as always, Michael. Thank you, Joey. Take care. And coming up after the top of our break, we have former Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, a two-time Bronze Star recipient, four-time combat veteran, and we're going to talk about, well, what's going on in the world, especially with all these wars kicking up. Uh, look forward to talking to this gentleman. Y'all stay tuned. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. With SRN News, I'm John Scott. The U.S. Army Special Operations Command says five Army Aviation Special Operations Forces were killed when their helicopter crashed in the eastern Mediterranean over the weekend. The military's European Command says... The UH-60 helicopter went down during an air refueling mission. A Chicago firefighter has died from injuries he suffered when he fell through a light shaft at a burning building. 39-year-old Andrew Price was helping battle a fire at a four-story building in the Lincoln Park neighborhood. Los Angeles drivers being tested in their first commute since a weekend fire that closed elevated Interstate 10 near downtown. A word on when that interstate will reopen. The Dow had 70 points and the S&P 500 up two points. This is SRN News. Are you looking for a way to preserve our founding history and American spirit for generations to come? Look no further than the blueprints of Liberty Brick. Each brick you purchase helps build Liberty Village, a family destination where youth and families will encounter history like never before. You'll feel a sense of pride and belonging when you see your name engraved on a brick in Liberty Village. The Blueprints of Liberty Brick is a way to leave your mark on the future while preserving our nation's rich heritage. Liberty Village will impact hundreds of thousands of visitors, capturing the lives, moments, and stories of the greatest men and women in our nation's founding history. Join us in creating a legacy for generations to come. Visit unitedwepledge.org today to order your Blueprints of Liberty Brick and learn more about this monumental project. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Rich Thomas Weather. Well, hi, everybody. Dry start to the week today, but that won't last long. Today is high temperature in the upper 60s, partial sunshine, but considerable cloudiness. Then the risk of more rain begins late tonight, low 53. Tomorrow and Wednesday, periods of rain, breezy, cool, high near 60 tomorrow and Wednesday. Looks like a potential soaker. We do need the rain, though. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. At ASE Credit Union, financing your next adventure is easier than ever with rates as low as 5.25%. Apply online or visit your local branch today. Federally insured by the NCUA Equal Opportunity Lender. ASE Credit Union, your life, your cause, your history. Thinking about new flooring for your home or business? Since 1969, Georgia Floors Direct has guaranteed the lowest prices on the River Region's largest inventory of all types of flooring. Call or visit GFD today. Georgia Floors Direct. Eastern Boulevard, across from Lowe's. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management staff, or any advertisers. Time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. 
What the hell are we doing here? We are behaving the way a superpower ought to behave. Well, our behavior has produced some crappy results. Joey Clark. Welcome back to the program, folks. News and views in the afternoon. I'm your host, Joey Clark. Eddie Bader's still in the house. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right. And now it is uh, my honor and my privilege to bring on our next guest over the live stream, uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. Uh, sir, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing really good. Thanks for having me. Uh, great to have you on the program. So for folks who, who don't know, you know, you and I are just meeting this way for the first time. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what you're up to these days. Uh, well, I am a 21-year uh, uh, veteran of the U.S. Army, retired in 2015 as a lieutenant colonel, uh, which included uh, four combat deployments during my time, Desert Storm, uh, and then another one in Iraq, and then two in Afghanistan, last one in 2011. Uh, and I am uh, currently a senior fellow and military expert at Defense Priorities in D.C. And then I have uh, just recently started my own uh, uh, YouTube show, Daniel Davis Deep Dive, where we take a look at issues that are in the news uh, from a deeper perspective and tell people what's really going on on the ground. Now, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're one of the, the first guys at the officer level to say what we're doing in Afghanistan. This doesn't seem like we're going in the right direction here, right? I, I was, yeah, I was, uh, as far as I know, anyway, the, the only one that ever came out publicly while he was still in uniform. I uh, wish some others, the others did it after they got out, but I, I wish they would have done it while they were in uniform. It would have had more of an impact, maybe, but uh, right. I, I just did it because I, I was, I felt morally compelled to do so, just, just to tell the truth. And, you know, whatever happened, happened, I guess. Now, and so where to begin? Because there's a, a lot of places we could begin. It might be good to start with Ukraine. And the light is there. In, in my mind, it seems like the Hawks are sort of clawing back their position a little bit while still making noises that we're the good guys. We have to support the good guys against the evil Russians. But in terms of how this war has gone and where it's at today, uh, what are we looking at? Well, look, the, the bottom line to it is that this war cannot be won militarily by Ukraine, point blank. And it, it doesn't matter how many planes, tanks, artillery shells, any of that stuff. It doesn't matter how much you give them, it'll never be enough because they they don't have enough uh, soldiers, qualified soldiers, trained soldiers that are still alive on the Ukraine side. And Russia has an almost inexhaustible supply of personnel and all the uh, tools of war that they need. Uh, and they are clearly never gonna give up. And so to continue to try to get a military victory for Ukraine, is to just continue to throw good money into bad to get more Ukrainian people killed and probably more of their cities destroyed because you're not going to change the outcome. So it is time to change the policy so that we can at least try to get a negotiated settlement to end the killing. Now, do you think it's more like, well, we had a chance, but daggummit, it, it's not happening? Or was this a bad idea, this proxy war from the get-go? Yeah, it never had a chance. Uh, I. I I thought that Russia was a lot better than they were at the outset, and I thought they would win quicker. Uh, but they were exposed as, at having basically been a Potemkin village uh, in their previous 10 years of so-called military reform. But the problem is that Russia is such a massive country with enormous natural resources that they can absorb those losses that they had, and then they've been able to recover from that. Their tactics are better now. Uh, and definitely their military industrial complex is is just cranking through the roof right now in a ways that Ukraine can never match. You see that they're already suffering badly because now that this Israel-Hamas war broke out, so much of our attention is there. Now then the same categories of interceptor missiles and, and uh, uh, artillery shells that were going to Ukraine are now going down there. And we just don't have any more to hand out. So uh, Russia doesn't have that problem. They've got North Korea, which apparently is going to give literally hundreds of thousands, if not in the millions, to Russia, and they've got their own industrial capacity, which Ukraine can't. So any way you want to cut this, time is not working it for Ukraine. Now, in often, uh, I'm just a layman here, but I, I do find reading, say, military history fascinating. And it's clear that there are different epochs or different ways, styles of how wars are fought. Uh, and we obviously seem like we're in a different place than, say, the United States was in Gulf you know the first gulf war desert storm uh it seems like we're in a different place even with the campaigns in afghanistan and iraq uh, seeing how the fighting has been conducted especially this has played out in ukraine uh what is kind of the the style of warfare we're seeing is it i've heard is it just over reliance uh, especially on cheap drones because you can uh, destroy a lot of stuff but they're also cheap and accurate but what are we seeing here 
Yeah, we're seeing the evolution of warfare, frankly, because, you know, you've had this, you know, like the Desert Storm in 1991. You had the Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, where you had these large formations of tanks sweeping across the, the deserts. Uh, you know, we had lots of similar kinds of things during World War II in various battlefields in Europe and, and in North Africa. Uh, but right now, because of the intelligence capacity of, of satellites, of the drones, long range artillery and, and, and precision missile fire, uh, you just see you can't do those things the way you did in the past. And right now, both sides are trying to figure out how can you do it in the future or even in the present. And, and the question is, will the drones make like tanks no longer important? Uh, or, or they're like the mechanized warfare is no longer important. I think it definitely is. Infantry is still vitally important, but the side that figures out how to use drones and counter drones to, to, to the best, and that's electronic warfare and other direct means, then they can strip away the other sides while keeping theirs. Now, all of a sudden, those ground forces can be effectively used. And, and right now, neither side has been too good at it especially the counter drone part because they both have lots of drones so that's the reason why you see kind of a stalemate for the most part on the line but you see enormous casualties on both sides that's the really right. tragic humanitarian part yeah and it almost uh somewhat comparable to world war one not quite as bad but it's yeah, just closer to world war one than world war two right and uh one area that i'm i'm worried about and i was worried about it from the outbreak of this war it, to me it and maybe somebody like saying Alexander Dugan's nuts. Well, in fact, he does seem a little nuts. But it to me seemed like Russia wasn't just going for a land grab. They saw this as their opportunity to sort of force what they call a multipolar order. And I bring this up because you can start to see as you go a little south on the map, what's Turkey up to? And then, of course, what's going on now in the Holy Land serving as a further catalyst for disruption and mayhem in the world. So let's go now to the Holy Land and what's happening between Israel and Gaza as we speak. What's the, the latest uh, happening there on the ground? Uh, yeah, that, that just continues to get worse for the, for the Palestinian people uh, because uh, the IDF is moving down the, the Gulf Coast, or not the Gulf Coast, but the, the sea coast uh, around the, where the hospitals are, are graced in an effort to completely surround and cut off the Hamas fighters within Gaza City. Uh, and there's just enormous casualties being incurred and, and humanitarian nightmare that the world has not seen at this scale in, in decades. And it's just horrific. And the real hard fighting has yet to even start because mm. Israel is going to have to go nearly building by building, in some cases, room by room to be able to take out the Hamas fighters. So many of whom are not just mixed in with the civilian population, not just mixed in with the various buildings, but of course, in this spider network tunnel system that they have and, and you you just can't bypass that stuff you have to be methodical and destroy every bit of it uh or they'll pop up behind you somewhere is i'm sure going to happen i mean you can't get them all but if they don't at least try then that they'll they'll be suffering tremendous casualties on the idf side so meaning that the destruction that we've seen so far is only going to get worse uh and the whole problem of keeping western support while preventing the Arab world from rising up, you know, too much against Israel is going to get harder as time goes on. Again, folks, talking to Daniel Davis. Uh, it looks like on YouTube, Daniel Davis Deep Dive is what you need to search for, folks. That's Daniel Davis Deep Dive. Like and subscribe. Uh, I was checking out uh, some of your podcast over the weekend. Sir, I'd seen you on Judge Napolitano's show, and, um, and I very much love the guest you have on there. Folks, check it out. Again, Daniel Davis. Uh, deep dive is there been any uh, breakthrough with at least some pauses for humanitarian aid I, it doesn't seem a ceasefire is gonna happen as long as bb netanyahu's in charge yeah but there, there won't be any ceasefire and, and i apologize but i'm gonna have to break contact here in about three minutes because i have okay. another show to go to sure. uh but there won't be any ceasefire for the foreseeable future because hamas doesn't want it and and israel doesn't want it uh but there will be humanitarian pauses just out of necessity i i wish it was out of uh, just human compassion for suffering people but it's primarily because of the requirement for based on israel for the united states we put pressure on them because there are so many people dying they just don't have enough food and water even to survive and that stuff has to get through there and now then there's at least these three to four hour pauses i think six hours in one of the days so they can get food in and people can at least get out of the destruction zone. Uh, and they're probably going to have to keep doing that for the foreseeable future. But that doesn't affect the tactical fight anywhere. Israel will still continue to go on with that without changing. 
And, and real quick, since you got to run, I've been saying this too, and I, I love that you can back this up. Why do we have these small contingents of U.S. troops all around the region? It seems like they're just setting ducks to be hit. They are. I, I was on Fox News just a couple of hours ago and just about drove me crazy because you have people like Jack Keane who say, no, we need to hit Iran harder. We need to go in and fight more and, and do more to these people, thinking that somehow that's going to get the message through. It's not going to get a message through. It's just going to get more Americans killed for nothing. So far, there's been 52 attacks since the 17th of October in retaliation for what's going on in Israel. Our troops there do absolutely nothing for us. They don't they, they don't defend us. They don't add to our security. They're nothing but a strategic vulnerability. And we need to get them out before any are pointlessly killed. We don't volunteer to serve our country so that we could just be a pawn in the middle of the desert waiting for an enemy missile to strike and kill us. We we dedicate our lives and are willing to risk our lives for American citizens and American security. And neither of those things has happened in the desert. They all need to come out. Well, sir, uh, this has been brief, but very enjoyable. And I'd love to have you back on the program. Yeah, I'd love to come back. I'm sorry I had to keep this so short, but uh, but I'd oh. love to come back on your show. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate oh, you. You bet. See you next time. Again, that's Daniel Davis, uh, Daniel Davis Deep Dive. Check it out on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Um, Eddie, what would you think of that gentleman there? Oh, I like him. <clears throat> Obviously, yeah. he's got a little bit of experience, and uh, I can appreciate that. Just a little bit. Of, and he's got a southern draw. I think he's from Texas. I can see that. Which, you know, you, you get these New Jersey guys on air all the time. Like, eh. like with Napolitano. I, I kind of like him, but there's a, you know, there's a limit. No, but I like that he has the experience. Um, two times... Ron Star winner. Well, I appreciate his recipient. Last, one of his last statements was, "We have Americans protecting American security and American treasure, not to just go sit in the middle of the desert and wait on a missile." Right. And the only person in terms of leadership, like the presidential candidates, I've, the only person I've heard say something like this is Vivek. Yep. Everybody else is in that Fox News mode of, "We got a bomb, Who's bomb, bomb, or on." <laughs> And it, to me, I, I don't understand, yeah, like, why do we have these small contingent of forces? What are they actually doing right. there? I can, and, I can see if there was something there, but a lot of them, from my experience, are there. They're just there. And there's so much I was wanting to get to with him. I, I appreciate the, his time, and uh, we'll have Daniel Davis back on oh, the program. But you could see where it was going, Eddie. I'm very worried that if the war with Ukraine and Russia isn't ended very mm -hmm. soon, then you are going to start to see sort of this, not just in on paper, in parchment, not just in words, an actual practical alliance between a oh, lot yeah. of different countries. Yep. And in some cases, it could be the remaking of the world order. Now, one thing we weren't able to get to in this segment with Daniel Davis is Turkey. And the more you listen to Erdogan, folks, the president of Turkey, this guy is preparing his country for war. He's doing it with propaganda. He's doing it rhetorically. And they do have the military that could be a huge problem. And if they make that move, who knows what the fallout with NATO. But that is a massive issue we're seeing. And then you add to it that where we should really have our eye on the ball in terms of national defense is China. Right. And right now we're told by so many war hawks, well, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Mm. Uh huh. Not the leadership we have. But isn't Biden meeting with China uh, this week? Believe yeah, he, I think it's happening think today in San Francisco. They're getting that chip reset in him. Right. But there's so much of that that just is like the whole idea that we're working with China on climate change. No, we're not. Give me a break. How many how many coal productions did they have running last year and we're, while we're busy shutting it, them down? It's such a scam. It's a scam. It's a huge scam. I'm just glad that a lot of people are waking up to that finally. Well, no, I'm, I'm happy to. I would be what would I call myself a lukewarmist. I think it is plausible that the amount of human activity has affected uh, the greenhouse effect, has affected climate change. Now, I don't think we fully understand feedback loops of that, especially over time. So if you're trying to map out, if we put this much carbon into the you know, atmosphere, what's the effect going to be over 50 years, 100 years? What's one volcano do? Right. Well, there's that, too. But I'm, I'm a lukewarmist in the sense that the theory seems somewhat plausible, but I think as soon as it goes into Al Gore territory, as soon as it goes into, we need to have, you know, Klaus Schwab, the Great Reset, the, the World Economic Forum, where every aspect of your life has to be controlled to fight this climate uh, catastrophe on the horizon. 
Well, that's that, the, that's where it's not gonna go work for us. How dare you! Oh, shut up, Greta. Plymouth Rock is the exact, exact same level as it was when somebody landed on it not too long ago. Well, so I have a hard time buying into the climate. And change the point deal. Dick Brubaker was making earlier: all these rich folks are still buying right oceanside property right. because if it's gonna let's be honest, if it's gonna go underwater in thirty years. Why do you get a thirty-year mortgage on it? Why right. is a mortgage company writing you a mortgage right. on it? Right. Why is the number one thing that's killing the auto market nowadays EVs? Right. And it, it's just, I feel like we're not keeping our eye on the ball. There's a lot of groupthink. There's a, we're not calling the BS out when we see yeah. it. Or the folks who do don't get rewarded. This yeah, is what I mean true. by groupthink. pushed away, yeah. That uh, I'm sure whether you're talking to Daniel Davis, when he stuck his neck out and said, hey, what we're doing in Afghanistan, he did so early in uniform while still serving, yep. is not working. I'm sure he wasn't very popular for that stance. Look at somebody like uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he's not very popular for the stances he has. And from listening to somebody like McGregor, I've learned that if you honestly disagree, you're just not invited to the yep, party. That's how they do it. It is groupthink out the wazoo. And um, let's just hope this Israeli Palestinian war doesn't expand. But here's kind of the development Secretary of State Blinken has been to every Arab country around the world, including visiting Gaza, but he's mm-hmm. been around all the Arab nations surrounding. Now, it's not a good sign that your Secretary of State has to wear a bulletproof vest as he's visiting the embassy in Baghdad. Thought we did. I thought we won that. No? Not really. Money right now. But it, it seems to me that the U.S. administration isn't in charge of squat. The Israelis are going to do what they're going to do. And I don't think they need a ceasefire. I wish they would do more of these humanitarian pauses because it is awful. Mm-hmm. what's happening but the israelis are going to do what they're going to do secretary blinken isn't going to cow them into doing anything and well obviously blinken and sullivan notice i'm not mentioning biden they're not going to pull that aircraft carrier out either no. that would be a way to get israel's attention no that ain't happening either and then as they go to all the arab partners around the region how much do you think the united states is actually respected at this point uh not much at all without being nice no not much at all so the, the hope is this stays a contained war, but the, it seems like now the threat from the north with Hezbollah and now Turkey you got to throw in there. Uh, it's just a wider war would be, I think, the worst case scenario for the United States where we're still funding what's going on in Russia. Then a wider war could see certain frenemies turning against us as China continues to take more advantage of their near abroad. It, it's just an ugly time to be around, but... Uh, well, but, you know, Nikki Haley's spending $10 million in Iowa and New Hampshire, so you know that, like, she's great, right? No. <laughs> no. 272-9228. This part of the program brought to you by River Region Contracting. And they're at River Region Contracting. Well, Todd Clark and his team are ready to help you. Yes, they are. With that roof of yours. They are the premier roofing contractor here in the River Region. They're at River Region Contracting. And, you know, owning a home is one of your most expensive and long-term investments, if not just the most expensive. Yep. For a lot of people, it is, Joe. And a big part of your home is what, Eddie? A roof? Yep. That's kind of what you really want to worry about. You don't want it raining on the inside, Joe. Here's the good news. When you need to get preventative maintenance done, what you should do is call River Region Contracting at 356-8635. I did. And that inspection is free. Absolutely free. And the estimate they gave me? Yeah. It was free, too. But And it was accurate. It was very accurate. In fact, it was some of the items that uh, on the new house, I've... Instead of doing it all at one time, I'd be able to call them up. Hey, let's knock some of this out. Let's knock some of this out. And this, Great. Your, your home, that you, your proper home, is a metal roof, yep. right? Oh, yeah. But they can also do asphalt. They can do asphalt or do metal. And, you know, I kind of took for granted, honestly, that my metal roof, I was always told it's going to last forever, and it will. However, those screws that you put in there, they got little pieces of rubber on there. And, you know, I was told, oh, they're good for 25, 30 years. But after dealing with uh, River Region there, I got them to go on my roof, just give me an inspect. And let me tell you, they found more of those screws with those busted grommets. I was going to have trouble soon. So they did me a huge favor. And they replaced them all. And honestly, my estimate was exactly what they did. And they left nothing, no nails, no screws, no nothing behind. Good job. There's a reason they're the premier yeah. roofing contractor in the River Region. So give, again, Todd Clark and his team a call today at 356 8635. Free inspections, free estimates. They're also insurance specialists, so they can walk you through that claims process. Should they find a problem, your insurance might cover. And, of course, they're just great people. 
local business. Yeah, they're part of that Clark's family. Yeah, they are. Right? Again, 356-8635. And tell Todd Clark and the team that Joey and Eddie from News and Views in the afternoon sent you more news and views in just a moment. Uh, We have plenty of other stories to get to right after this. coming or going but whether you're going to work or coming home greg budell is there mornings six till nine and afternoons three till six only on news talk 93.1 fm wacv 1819 news alabama congressman jerry carl is supporting efforts made by georgia congresswoman marjorie taylor green to impeach the u.s secretary of homeland security alejandro mayorkas Green took to the House floor last week to offer the articles of impeachment. She cited the influx of millions of illegal aliens into the U.S., as well as deadly drugs, as the reason for the impeachment. Taylor Green says that Mayorkas has failed to fulfill his oath of office to maintain operational control at the U.S.-Mexico border. Congressman Carl agrees and is signing on to the privileged resolution. Carl says the border is wide open and Mayorkas denies that there's even a problem and he needs to be fired. I'll be back with more Alabama stories after this. Are you enjoying 1819 News? If so, consider joining 1819 News as a member. As a nonprofit news organization, we depend on the support of Alabamians like you. Memberships start out as little as $5 a month, and you'll get access to exclusive content only offered to our members. You'll be supporting independent journalism done by people who cherish Alabama values. Become a member today by visiting 1819news.com and clicking Become a Member. That's 1819news.com and click Become a Member today. A Wilmer man has refused a plea deal offered to him regarding a car crash that killed a runner from Mobile, Victor Birch, last year. 23-year-old Aubrey Pate is entering a not guilty plea instead. He's charged with operating under the influence of marijuana when the vehicle he was driving crossed the median on Range Line Road and then hit the oncoming vehicle that 61-year-old Birch was driving. Shots were fired this past Saturday at a pickup basketball game at a church recreation center outside of Birmingham. Homewood police are now charging 21-year-old Carrie Austin Thornton with attempted murder. The shooting occurred after an argument broke out over a basketball game at Dawson Memorial Baptist Church. Fortunately, no one was injured. I'm Andrea Tice. For more news affecting Alabamians, go to 1819news.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the daily newsletter. Hunting season is here. It's time for you to get on over to Prattville Farm Center. Here's Randy to tell you all that he's got on the shelf for you to buy. We've got some good deals. We have seed mixes from WMS, Pennington, Kelly Seed. We have every kind of seed you could possibly want. So y'all come on down here and we'll get them green fields planted. By the way, if you need sprayer parts, parts for your equipment, we got that too. Come on down. 1154 South Memorial Drive in Prattville, 365-5400, 365-5400. Do you have a cell phone or tablet that isn't charging, dying fast, or maybe the screen is damaged? Don't get suckered into buying a new one. XI Repair can fix your current device same day and in under 30 minutes. Their certified technicians fix and recover data from thousands of cell phones, computers, tablets, game consoles, and drones seven days a week. Give them a call today at 334-777-1234 or visit them online at XIRepair.com. At Kia of Auburn, we are excited to get the holidays underway. This month, we are thrilled to feature the 2023 Kia Telluride. This midsize crossover SUV offers your family a stylish and comfortable ride. Not only that, it comes with a long list of great standard features. Stop by and let us help you find the perfect Kia Telluride to make your holiday season more memorable. KiaofAuburn.com. Kia of Auburn, where you are always number one. Do you struggle with occasional nerve aches in your hands or feet? Try Nervive Nerve Relief from the world's number one nerve care company. Nervive tablets contain alpha lipoic acid to relieve nerve aches, weakness, and discomfort, plus B-complex vitamins to support healthy nerve function as you age. Live life with less nerve discomfort with Nervive Nerve Relief. Learn more at NerviveHealth.com. 
And try Nervive Pain Relieving Cream to block nerve pain signals at the source. Use as directed. For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company, run by Alabamians for Alabamians. 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. Hi, this is Carl Schmidt, naturopath and owner of The Herb Shop. Listen every Saturday to Winning Wellness and learn from experts in different fields of science and technology how nutritional supplements can help you. Listen to Winning Wellness every Saturday at 10 a.m. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. News and talk without the static. The River Region's most trusted voice. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon. I'm your host, Joey Clark. Eddie Bader in the house. How you doing, Joe? I'm all right. Well, it's good having all these guests. Yeah. Uh, show has flown by. Yeah, if you want to go watch back the live stream, it stays up there on YouTube. Uh, we interviewed Senator, or former state senator, uh, Dick Brubaker. Right. He's now running for Congress. First of, I'm sure, many interviews. In oh, that. no doubt. Uh, had the Mayor of Montgomery, Stephen Reed, yeah, also Stephen in studio, by. and he was more casual today. I liked, I enjoyed our, our conversation today. He was a little more casual. And yeah. um, then that Daniel Davis guy, that, definitely got to have him back. Me. Yeah, I'd like to have him back on. Because that was cold. We didn't prepare what we were going to talk about. I just asked him straight up, and he had answers. So yeah, I appreciate very that. very informed, and um, doesn't mamby-pamby around the answers, Joe. He just no. gives them right to you. Now, let's go to Joe. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Yeah, this... Um Israeli Amma situation. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't heard anything from uh, Germany or the UN or the global elite. Now, they meddle in our affairs, saddles with bad leadership, and probably messing with our economy too. But we don't see them active in a, in a global situation. They put it on us. <laughs> I feel we're getting used to the pawn yep. in a global situation here. Bring us down. Yeah, I think you're right, and I think uh, the UN and a lot of these global institutions need to be reminded of who foots the bill. Yeah, and be careful of Germany. Be very careful of Germany. Yeah, what the old line about NATO was to keep the United States in, Russia out, and Germany down. Right. And you know, even in the EU, Germany wants to lead. It's kind of a funny thing. It's a German thing. They've been leading a long time. Why are they the fourth right now? Mm. Ugh. Well. Well, I appreciate the call, Joe. Anything else? Okay, well, I just wanted to express that. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Joe. Let's go to Urbanite. Hey, Urbanite. What's happening, Urbanite? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I was going to paraphrase what he was about to say, but I think Germany does a good job of leading, personally. Yeah? And I like the way they, I like the way they take care of their business when they worry about taking care of everybody else's business. You like the way they stay out of others' business? Is that what you're saying? Well, I like the way they tend to make sure Germany comes out on top. Ah. Oh, yeah. The they have some natural uh, advantages in terms of the geography, for instance, there in Europe. But and you know, and I know from my NATO days, the only reason we're as involved as we are is because our, our little generals have to use our money to make themselves relevant. Hmm. Because if you look at a professional military person from a Germany or from an England, our guys aren't even in that damn league. Most of those guys, most of their colonels and generals, speak three and four languages and have been all over the planet. Our guys are nowhere near their level of confidence in military leadership. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. I, I was going to ask, why is it we never talk about how crappy Midtown looks with the pollution and the paper on the end? Not necessarily on the interstate, but on the byways. Are you talking like Zelda Road and that Carter Hill, uh, McGee yeah. Road? I, you know, I would have never thought about it until I just got my lunch at Chick fil -A. and to know how nice Chick fil -A is and how well maintained they keep everything that you have to go to the 
wallet you have to go through to go to that restaurant. Oh, I know exactly. That's near my neighborhood. That Ann Street, the, yeah. that gas station row right there in front of Walmart. Yeah. Walmart. Yeah. Yep. I don't know how I mean, much you can do about that other than, like, buying out the gas it's stations. And, and, it's for sale. Yeah. Thing, Joey, right, Joey, but it's always that little concentration of an area. The rest of the area is fine. Yeah. Or doable. But that area is just like, how does it get like that? It makes no sense. Well, it used to be a hard stop at the uh, at Zelda Road, where Zelda Road kind of kicked in. But now, when you go under the interstate, you go over the Elver Pass, it's creeping down Zelda Road. I mean, that right. light is creeping down Delta and, Road. And, yeah. and the funny fight would say, we need to dip it in the butt. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's, yeah. Yeah, by the way, like that new guy, is he going to be permanent, that, that military dude? Uh, hopefully I so. Sure I hope think so. he enjoyed the segment. Yeah. I enjoyed the segment. Definitely we'll have him back. But we still don't know where he's from. Where is he out of? Is he broadcasting uh, he was, show or is he? Uh, I'm not sure where he's at today. He's from Dallas, Texas. He might still be there. Oh, but, oh so you think maybe he's broadcasting from yeah. there? Yep. Yeah, I, I I didn't get okay. into all the details, but it, it was funny. Eddie's like, "Who do we have on?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, he's right we, there on yeah, Fox we News." Yeah, looked up and he was on Fox <laughs> ten minutes before he was on here. Yeah. So. Hey, I sent you uh, I sent you a thing on the Johnny Cakes. Was that what you thinking of, or thinking about last week? The what? Johnny Cakes. The Johnny Cakes. Uh, uh, it's uh, the it's similar. It, it not quite. Right. Okay, so what's missing from what you remember? The name. Yeah, I, I See, think no, Joey don't know nothing about no Johnny Cakes. Come no, on, no, the yeah, ones you, the pictures of the ones you sent me looked way too symmetrical, like spherical, like, like these well, things you, look too nice. That's called, a, that's called being a good cook, and when you, you know, when you lay yourself down, <laughs> you, you put a ring around it. You know, you you can do presentation at home too. You know, yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. I'm, just <laughs> I'm to eat, hungry. <laughs> uh, grandma, grandma taught me you eat with your eyes first. Wise hey, woman. You, yeah. You're right. you, have, you, you have to make it look good. You got people eating and, and entertaining folks. You got to make it look But Yeah, it's a, I think it's the same thing. I I remember this. All you're really doing is making cornbread. All right. And Quick frying cornbread. it. That's, That's all you're really idea. doing. Yep. Yeah. No, it's about what I remember. I don't remember. I was so young, but. You just remember I being good. Oh, I, mean, mm. I, I got a friend like that. I remember his grandma's business recipe. And mm. my only problem is I refuse to ever get up at 5 o'clock. <laughs> you can make biscuits any time of the day. No, and you're killing me, man. Like, this week, I'm definitely starting the i got to lose 20, 20 Oh, you're going to this week. No, and it's not and for vanity. The, uh, the holiday season. No, actually, it's not that tough for me during the holidays. Okay. I wish you wouldn't have said that because now I have a goal. Hmm. You're up my 20 pounds. <laughs> but look at this, man. My household was so weird. They only ate biscuits in the morning. We never had biscuits for any other meal. Uh, she yeah, would do rolls. Either. She would do rolls, yeast rolls. She would make yeast rolls, but Big she would never do biscuits. But on the morning, yeah, that morning time, I, w- I refuse to give a five o'clock to help cook for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like I don't it that much. You- uh, I didn't right. appreciate my mom's cooking enough when she did it because it was I was a kid. I was a teenager, right. so it's like chicken thighs with fresh thyme, you know, stuffed under the skin right from the garden. I'm right. like, yeah, uh, great. Chicken. All right, we're having chicken tonight. Can we get something with fat? Yeah. Can we get pizza? <laughs> 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 you take care, Joey. Appreciate it, man. Take care, everybody. No, she went through like a poppy seed chicken phase, which is pretty dang good. I like poppy seed chicken right. casserole. Yeah. Then she went through this. I can't even. I'll have to find it. It's like a chicken lasagna thing. No, I don't like the sound of that. It was actually. I'm sure it was really Just good. Like, it was like a white lasagna. It was freaking tasty. I'm but, making lasagna soup tonight. But, you know, they get into the phases of like, oh, this is what I make, but it's also like, well, it sounds like it's a casserole. You just throw casserole. everything in and you know, make it easy. Man. Yeah. That and the crock pot. I wish they would, uh, and they don't anymore, but they will come back. They've got to teach people how to cook again. Youth has got to learn. I think my class was the last one that had home ec. See, I'm more like my father when it comes to cooking, because I remember when he would grill. cook, which was the grill, <laughs> but when he would cook, he would also go from the farm yeah like where he would add flavor and by that i mean hey we ain't just cooking up mashed potatoes with a little bit of salt and pepper okay it's like we're throwing an entire stick of butter in there right oh by the way joe can you get the entire roasted head of garlic in mm. there i'm going to squeeze that into he would just go full bore right? these portobello mushrooms oh, and like man. steak and all this stuff i'm like that's what i want to eat all the time yeah well as you get older joey you're gonna have to put some fiber in your diet <sighs> yeah. really why I can just tell you from experience that things get... I feel pretty regular. Well, I I did too until I hit 50. Okay. You ever heard of Fiber One? 
Oh no. Get used to it, kid. Mm hmm. Yeah. Two seven two nine two two eight. We should come up with a fiber donut. How hard is that? A fiber donut. Yeah. How hard is that? Come no, sugar. Urban Night bring a Midtown. Like I was thinking more where uh, Midtown Pizza yeah. and like First Watch and all that. Joseph A. Bank. That area is still pretty nice. That is, but it's just like you're saying that one area right there on Zelda Road and Ann Street. But mm. the Ann Street is making the it's creeping up towards Zelda Road. Well, and there has been more crime incidents there. Yep. I remember Midtown Pizza's you know, door got smashed up. Yeah. Uh, that gas station next to MA isn't exactly uh, the safest either these days. Right. Certain times of night. Yeah, and that's just, that's unfortunate. Um, and the good thing is, I think the, uh, talking about all this economic development, I think the mayor is understanding this. Uh, some of it, though, is... Uh, the, the saddest part of it is how young some of the folks causing the problems are. That's no, the most frustrating. No training, Bubba. Yeah, that's the most frustrating part of this. Yep. And it doesn't take that many to ruin a good no, time. It so it, it really doesn't. We'll see where all that goes. But 272-9228, this part of the program brought to you by New Look Decorating Center. Brett and there, folks, Joe. Oh, yeah. New Look Decorating Center. You can say hi to Brett Lanham, the manager. Yep. And, of course, Brian Carr, the owner. But Brett has put together a great team. With Got a great team over there. Jordan, pretty cool dude. Yeah. Go ahead. And then there's Katie. She's really nice, but she don't like jokes about Joey. Because she's awesome. <laughs> I just haven't told her the right one yet. Okay, that's fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, you'll find you'll find the right angle. There's plenty to make fun of with that Joey guy. But uh, Katie not only can help you with paint... She is the wallpaper and That's fabric right. specialist fabric there. Business. That's right. And New Look Decorating. So whether you're doing it yourself or contracting out the job, New Look Decorating Center can help you find that great high-quality Benjamin Moore product, whether paint or stain supply or, again, wallpapers and fabrics there. Ask for Katie. And so if you're doing it yourself, they'll give you tips and tricks so you do yeah, it yourself yeah. the right way the first Save time. Save some time, too. And money. Yep. Or maybe you're contracting out. They know all the contractors in yes, town. Yes, they do. Yeah, they seriously, if you need uh, advice on who to hire, they can help you up they there sure new can. decorating. You can get the supply there, and you can find yourself a contractor through a recommendation. And, you know, uh, at New Look Decorating, not only are they a 40-year local business, mm -hmm. so you're helping the Montgomery economy. Yeah, which is I nice. I think one of the largest plants for Benjamin Moore is right here in Alabama. Oh, really? I think Pell City, Alabama. So we are helping local Alabamians as well as local Montgomery. When you buy that Benjamin Moore oh, okay. product there, New Look Decorating Center. And it's good paint, too. It really good is paint. good. So check them out today. You can always call them at 271-0007. That's 271-0007. Or uh, just stop by their showroom at 6237 Atlanta Highway, right here in Montgomery where uh, Bell Road dead ends to Atlanta Highway. Mm -hmm. You'll see it in all its glory. They've got their own stoplight. Yes, they do. New Look Decorating Center. And be sure to tell them, well, you heard about them here on News and Views in the afternoon now we're running out of time i'm trying to think what we should do next uh did you see uh tucker and uh trump enter ufc i saw the uh, 295 I guess the, yeah the video of them coming in yeah uh and the crowd going nuts oh yeah and let's see i'm trying to play this i don't know if it's safe for air hold on real quick because uh, i only saw actually the bill burr controversy out of this oh really yeah yeah, here's uh, here though is the clip. Let's listen in. How strong that team is making his way into the building. One of the bigger mixed martial arts fans, I know President Donald Trump taking his octagon side seat for UFC 295. So he's next to him is Kid Rock and yeah. Dana White. Yeah, but if he keeps doing this, Biden's going to outlaw UFC. Yeah, I mean, let's listen to this. This is the second time, dude. Yeah. We got two title fights coming up at UFC 295 here in a matter of moments. Live from Madison Square Garden. And President Trump will be here to witness all of this. And, he, and there are moments where Trump's looked tired, but he looks pretty good he looks here. pretty hyped up there, yeah. Four of the very well, best fighters in the all world right. are set to take right. their cracks at light heavyweight and interim heavyweight gold. We're trying to see, does this have the part where, is that Jared Leto? I think it is. But if you're partying with Kid Rock, how could you not be just a little bit on fire? Right. It starts right now. So uh, there is also one moment in this where oh, Bill Tucker. Burr 
Yeah, you said there was a Bill Burr controversy? Yeah, well, let's uh, look at this. Oh, boy. boy. What did that little fart say? No, Bill Burr didn't do anything. Bill Burr was there, though, in the celebrity section. Yeah. And his wife, who he's been with, uh, what, for 20 yeah, years? Yeah, I see uh, it now. Nia. Her full name is Nia Renee Hill. Yeah. Uh, we're showing it on the live stream now, folks, but that is Nia, clearly. Double tall man there. Double, uh... That's uh, the double tall man. Yeah. Just two middle fingers yeah. straight up behind Trump's back. Yeah. And Burr's like, you can't have nothing. Like, well, whatever. It's starting to make sense now. But I saw all these folks trying to write off Bill Burr. I'm like, write off a man Please. because of his wife? can't behave herself in front of a president who doesn't have a wife like that <laughs> not me <laughs> i don't have one of those right now so i can <laughs> say what i guy. want <sighs> more news and views in the afternoon after this <laughs> Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Good morning. Do you have time for lunch today? My treat. Absolutely. But what's the occasion? I'm in love with the new 24-7 Express kiosk at Worth Cleaners. The kiosk is so easy to use, and I can drop off and pick up on my schedule. Thank you for sharing that tip with me. You're welcome. I'm happy to have my lunch buddy back. Have you tried the new Worth Cleaners 24-7 Express kiosk? This is the first service of its kind in Montgomery. Customers love the convenience of dropping off and picking up dry cleaning and laundry on their schedule, day or night, 365 days a year. Even if you've never used Worth Cleaners before, you can go to their location at 7825 Vaughn Road today and use their 24-7 Express kiosk. Instructions along with several descriptive photos are posted on the wall next to the kiosk to aid customers who are first-time users. Give it a try. Visit our Vaughn Road location or find Worth Cleaners on Facebook for more information. Your family's clothing is worth it. Hello, this is Pam with All About the Bounce. We have been advertising with Blue Water Broadcasting for a little over a month now and have seen great results. Thank you, Blue Water, for helping us to bring the bounce to more customers across the river region. Radio advertisement is definitely the best advertisement. Radio works. It's as simple as that. Call us to find out how radio can work for your business. Blue Water Broadcasting. Local folks helping local business. The Health and Wealth Show. The Health and Wealth Show. The show so nice, we said it twice. Weekday evenings at 6 on News Talk 93.1 WACV. The Health... Wake it up, son. Joke's over, hey? This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Riverside Chevrolet Wetumpka. If it's Chevy, it's Riverside. Best price, best selection. Check them out on the web at RiversideUSA.net. Rich Thomas Weather. Well, hi, everybody. Dry start to the week today, but that won't last long. Today is high temperature in the upper 60s, partial sunshine, but considerable cloudiness. Then the risk of more rain begins late tonight, low 53. Tomorrow and Wednesday, periods of rain, breezy, cool. High near 60 tomorrow and Wednesday. Looks like a potential soaker. We do need the rain, though. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. CBNS Bank has a long history of stability and a legacy of serving our community's needs for generations since we began in 1906. At CBNS Bank, we're here for you. All loans subject to credit approval, member FDIC and equal housing lender. You asked, we listened. Rocky Bottom Materials is now offering full service landscaping and irrigation installation. Do you need landscape renovations or new landscaping for your property? Tired of dragging water hoses all summer to water your lawn? We can help. Let us create your dream landscape and install an automatic sprinkler system. We can solve any drainage issue in your yard. No more dealing with the mud all winter. Call us at 334-215-3704. Schedule an appointment with our professionals. Rocky Bottom, where beauty and functionality are just a call away. 
The River Region's first and only news talk station on FM. Live, local talk. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon. 272-9228. A. That's 272-9228. If you want to get in before we close up shop. So uh, there are a lot of folks freaking out about Trump's tone now that he is on uh, the campaign trail, on the true war path here. And... Um, because he's calling it the revenge tour yeah which uh, is freaking some folks out here's a little sample that cnn uh playing this clip let's let's listen in together they've weaponized the justice department they've weaponized the fbi and they've come at me with the worst indictments if they want to follow through on this uh, yeah it could certainly happen in reverse it could certainly happen in reverse what they've done is they've release the genie out of the box. They have done something that allows the next party. I mean, if somebody, if I happen to be president and I see somebody who's doing well and beating me very badly, I say, go down and indict them. Mostly, that would be, you know, they would be out of business. They'd be out. They'd be out of the election. In my case, uh, it was, they were such pathetic indictments. They released the genie out of the box. I don't think I've ever heard it put that way. Like Pandora's box, it's actually a Pandora's jar, if you read the right translation, not to be pedantic or anything about Greek mythology. But isn't it the genie out of the bottle? I don't know. But this has sent a lot of the press into a tizzy. Like, he can't... He can't say something like that. That's authoritarian! In fact, David Brooks... The potted plant conservative of the New York Times said it's truly scary authoritarianism for Trump to threaten to indict political opponents. What do you think they're doing to Trump right now? Is not Biden's top opponent Trump. And they're indicting him on all sorts of stuff. We're allowed to do it to him, but not to anybody else. Okay. That's going to lead us down a great road. And then in other news, Eddie, I don't know if you saw this, but Nikki Haley says she's surging in the polls, says <laughs> Trump has flatlined and DeSantis is, is uh, falling. DeSantis did take a little bit of a tumble this week because his high heels got in the way. Dun, However, dun, he'll be dun. back. It was funny enough, too, that uh, that boy George saw, I'll tumble for oh, you. Yeah. I'll tumble, tumble for you. Ronnie D and his cute boots. I'm telling you, man, she might think she's surging, but as an American... I don't see well, it. I wear these heels for ammunition. It's like, what does that even mean? You bat crap crazy woman. Maybe she's got like the single shot in the heel or something. All right, like in Austin Powers, spinning. you know how they had them. You know. <laughs> the fembots. <laughs> right. <laughs> Put it out there, man. Baseball. <laughs> Old showers. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher naked on a cold day. <laughs> Let's go to Ray Bowles from Prattville Carpet. Hey, Ray. How you doing, Ray? Yeah, I am great. Hey, jury duty went wonderful this morning. Did it? Good. Did you get picked? When, oh, no, no. I didn't get picked. Then oh, it did go I did wonderful. I uh, went in, and they said, gave my name, and I immediately said guilty. And she started laughing. She said, no, I don't need to know that. <laughs> what, what, but you can sit. She said, just go sit wherever you like. So I made a beeline for the judge's chair, right? <laughs> nice. And they went, no, no. <laughs> and I said, but you said, uh, she said, just anywhere else but there. So I went right around the table and sat right beside her. Yeah. I ain't lying. I really did it. Did you give her the old crazy eyes as you did that? Uh-huh. Yeah, we were having a great time laughing. Bet you were. We got in trouble once with the judge. And then people would come up to us and ask for, hey, I need to, I can't be here because so-and-so. And I'd look at them serious and I'd say, sir, that ain't good as you sit that back down. <laughs> so you just so took over. had to. Yeah, so we basically, you know, y'all had to stand up and give you raise your right hand. Yeah. Well, when I stood up, raised right hand, then everybody realized that I was a juror and I didn't work there. <laughs> <laughs> and then to top it off, they, I told her, I said, well, I, I told the lady I was sitting this house, well, I really can't stay here all day. It's my wife's birthday today, and I got to go home and fire some chicken. 
And she said, please tell the judge that. I said, yes, ma'am. So I got up in line, and I waited until my turn. And I said, well, she said, what's your, I said, I got to go home and fried chicken. It's Angie's birthday. <laughs> and Joey looked at me all crazy. She said, Ray, that's not an excuse. I said, well, how about this then? Let me try this one. I'm a married man, and if I sit in here and look at you for the next week, I'll be sinning all week long. <laughs> I saw the last and they let me go. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. I had a ball. I bet was, you did. It was well worth two hours. Yeah. <laughs> it was worth two hours. And then I got home and I told Angie what I did, and she didn't think it was near as funny as I did. I bet so not. I'm in a little bit of trouble. They yeah. never do. They never do. But uh, and also, it's right. great to know you can take time off and that the business will be fun. Yeah. But it, it is just fine. But it's Angie's birthday today. So have y'all, you remember her number? I have it written down, and if you want. All right, I'll, let me give it to you one more time. All right. 57 Go ahead and send her that quick text. Say, hey, we all love you. Happy birthday. Give it one more time, Ray. 657-1299. You are the man, Ray. Brave I know man. I am. You She's are going to love man. me tonight when I get home. Yes, she is. Yes, she, I'm telling you, it's one of the best things is that she looks forward to here. Every year, people text her or call her. Tell her happy birthday. Well, I'm going to be one of those people this year, Ray. So if you get an extra lick from her, you know, upside the head, sorry, man. I'm just doing what you asked me to and, do. And tomorrow, if I'm on the air asking for a divorce attorney, stuff, you'll <laughs> That's why. right. And by the way, this guy also sells carpet, 285-8117. And uh, be sure when you call 285-8117 that you tell him, hey, you heard Ray Bowles here on the radio with Joey and Eddie. <laughs> and next time you get in jury duty, try to go sit in the judge's seat. See what <laughs> I'm definitely trying that. Oh, well. hey guys, have a great day. You too, Ray. Let's see. This is on line three. You're on there. Who's this? Yeah, you should have gone to your call screener, sir. It's making me break the rule. Well, uh, okay. The, we don't have time for this. <laughs> Later. <laughs> oh, like you girls. <sighs> well, we run a tight ship here. Did we okay, learn anything see. today? Actually, I think we learned a good bit. I learned quite a bit today. I learned there's a new guest that we have on that I would like to talk to him more often. The last guy you had. Daniel Davis? Daniel. Yeah, I wanted to call him Danny. I already feel that close yeah. to him. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I look really forward like... to I've already sent an email off saying I enjoyed it. Would I'm going to go check out his YouTube stuff tonight. Uh, yeah, it's Daniel Davis Deep Dive on YouTube. I think it's somebody uh, that kind of, somebody I can get behind. And then uh, it was great seeing uh, Dick Brubaker in studio. It was great. It was yeah. great seeing the mayor. Also great seeing the mayor here in He had his jogging suit on. He's very casual. That means he's comfortable to be around us like that. It's a good start it's to good the thing. week, though. A little preview of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And it's based on my op-ed I wrote for 1819 News this week. Okay. It's a joke that the law keeps Alabamians from buying pot. Is it a funny joke? I don't, I don't think it's all that funny. No, we're going to go full libertarian oh and let our freak flag fly. We're going to be like full-on Dr. Hook freaking at the Freaker's Bowl tomorrow. So y'all need to, to hold on. But first, Judge Napolitano. Yeah, first get the judge. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to be as freaky as we do. but uh, You can always ask, Joey. Yeah, I dare yeah you. Could, could text him. You're like, <laughs> hey, you want to go freaking at the Freaker's Bowl? News phone, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's Joey. You know me. <laughs> y'all stay tuned. Happy Hour with Greg Budell. He's next.